the first the minister, uh, Ms. Tandi Modise, Honorable Tandi Modise, uh, and the deputy minister of uh, public enterprises, uh, Obed, uh, Honorable Obed Pupela. Uh, um, and also the Deputy Minister of Defence is here. Deputy Minister of Defence, thanks, uh, 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 Minister Papela. Uh, DM Defence. Um, let me welcome the the the, the ministers and the, the minister and the deputy ministers who are on the platform. Um, they are here representing uh, the two uh, entities. Um, is the Department of Defense that will be taking us through the briefing on the domestic defense uh, research and, uh, and development, um, as well as the briefing and, and, and uh, uh, DM public enterprises will be in the meeting with the team to brief us uh, on the DINEL's ability to support the SNDF following the midterm uh, budget, budget policy statement allocation. And then the, the rest is internal uh, to the committee. I welcome all of you, colleagues. Um, can you deal with apologies? Um, Anandipa. Good evening to the ministers, chair, and all members present. I've got an apology from Mr. Kulu and Ms. Bartlett from the member side. I also have an, an apology from the Minister of Public Enterprises. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. I think there is no objection to us uh, accepting those uh, apologies. Uh, I welcome all of you on behalf of my, myself and uh, my co-chair, uh, uh, Mr. Chabelang. Uh, Comrade Chabelang, how are you? Uh, sorry, Honorable Chabelang, how are you? No, I'm good and how are you? <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm driving from home to Gauteng because okay. I'm leaving for, I'm going abroad tomorrow, so I'm a yeah, I may miss the reception on the road as I'm driving. Sorry about oh. that. No, no, thank you very much. So we take uh, note of that. Uh, thanks, Coach. Uh, and Mr. Reda, I also see you. I see your hand as well. Thank you very much, Chair. Good evening to you and uh, all the colleagues online. Um, Chair, I just want to flag a matter for next week. Um, and I, I'm not sure when, when it would be more appropriate to do it, but... Uh, Noting that next week, Thursday, the NCOP will have a double debate. So it's like a double feature movie uh, at the drive-in and we will probably be sitting until after eight. So noting, of course, that we, we, we do have the option and there's often clashing meetings. I just want to raise uh, the matter because I will be debating in that second debate. So. Um, uh, so there is a clash of meetings for next week, which may which may impact the quorum, Chair. Thank you. No, no, thank you very much. Um, we we take note of that. Uh, thanks for giving us an advanced uh, notice. All right. Um, now, having uh, dealt with uh, item number two, we let's. I'm now going to these two uh, uh, briefings. Uh, I'll start with the the, the briefing uh, by the defense. Uh, sorry, uh, just on my note here that um, we are receiving a briefing on the levels of funding for domestic research. Sorry for uh, domestic defense research and uh, and development uh, to support the SNDF or let me say in order to support the SNDF with cutting edge 
uh, technology, equipment and systems uh, and to enhance performance and e effectiveness uh, of the uh, defense force. I must add that um, uh, to support, sorry, to improve uh, safety, safety as well. So that's the importance uh, of this sovereign uh, capability. We know that with the, 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 the fiscal constraints, uh, it has come under uh, uh, pressure. So this evening uh, we'll be taking a presentation on that. We thought we should um, pay, a, a, you know, focus a particular attention uh, to this uh, aspect, um, given its um, importance um, in, in, in enhancing the performance. Uh, and effectiveness of the defense force. So we have since asked the, the SecDef to review the slides that they've uh, given us uh, because it's about 42 slides, if I'm not mistaken. The first 15 is dedicated to technology, uh, why we need uh, technology. Um, which the uh, which um, of the policy uh, document mandates the department to engage uh, technology. Uh, they survey all the policy documents from uh, policy from the yeah from the white paper of 1996 to that white paper and and. Um, the defense review and another defense review. I thought uh, <clears throat> we, 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 we've accepted, I mean, the whole world, uh, the critical role technology uh, plays um, in, in modern, uh, in, the, in, the, in the modern, in modern economy, particularly uh, and particularly in the defense force as a, as a force uh, multiply. So we accept that. So we want to look not so much on technology, and, uh, but on research and development. Technology is one of the outcomes um, of uh, us uh, investing. Uh, in research and and, 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 and and development. I hope as they present their document, they will take that uh, in, into account. Uh, yes, they'll take that into account. And then two, we have the presentation by the, by the, by Dinell. Dinell, um, is uh, is responsible for a number of um, you know contracts uh, with uh, uh, the department. Uh, they range from project the uh, project Mohali, which attends to the obsolescence obsolescence upgrade of 15 of the South African Army's G6 uh, 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 system. This project was due to, for, was due for completion in 2021 and, uh, and has since been delayed until uh, 2023. We have not been informed of the reason for, for, for the delay. Uh, uh, another project um, amongst the projects that have just, uh, the, the, the number of, of contracts that, um, that they have with the department is, it's, 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 it's one pertaining relating to the project of Yester um, to supply uh, major infantry uh, combat vehicles 
um, as part of industrialization and industrialization and production. Uh, the first uh, phase was for 1.2 billion rand, and the second phase 8.4 billion rand. And um, I'm sure uh, with the escalation cost and penalties, these amounts have uh, gone up. And, uh, and this project in particular has been delayed for about uh, 10 years. Um, uh, DINEL is also supporting a number of uh, uh, our aircraft, uh, including Oryx and Rolf, and Rolf uh, helicopters, um, totaling um, uh, about 2.2 billion rand over a period of, uh, of three years. It was 2019 to 20, 20, 20, 2019 to 20, 2022, um, April or May, they are about. Uh, we don't know if what has since happened uh, uh, from the expiry of uh, this contract. Um, I know there was the discussion between the two entities, uh, Dinell and 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 AMSCO to uh, uh, what to call to uh, renew their contracts. Um, it's part of this aircraft, uh, this aircraft that uh, the the Dinel is supporting. The C one hundred and thirty uh, Hercules, uh, which is um, uh, worth uh, three hundred and fifty million rand also over the period of, uh, of three years. Um, it's Project uh, Biro. They were supplying us uh, with uh, uh, three G12 cannons for the South African Navy's uh, three uh, new inshore patrol uh, vessels. And um, uh, South African Navy, is Mkondo, uh, sub, the, the Mkondos is SA Navy's Mkondo, surface to air uh, missile uh, system, a data air to air industri uh, for industrialization and production under Project uh, Kamas. The, the last time we were informed as this committee was that this project in particular, the a data air to air um, uh, uh, project Kamas uh, stalled. I'm sure these are matters um, as the committee we are uh, we have uh, uh, interest uh, in. Um, <clears throat> so of course we we got information on the aircrafts serviceable and aircrafts uh, unserviceable, and um, and the fact that. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, in fact, are largely due to liquidity uh, crisis within uh, the within Dinel uh, itself. So that's the interest we have uh, as as a portfolio committee, uh, uh, as it were. The minister uh, is was kicked out. Uh, I think uh, the system kicked her out. I think she is facing um, network challenges. She will come uh, come back at some point. Colleagues, um, <clears throat> we 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 want to then look at these items uh, today. But without much ado, uh, there's been a request uh, to uh, bring up uh, the item on dinner. Um, uh, it's the second time that they're making this request uh, that we prioritize them. I'm sure it's the last time because they, we all are, um, you know, pressured, uh, working under term pressure. So, but I accept it on the basis that uh, is is Dinel is also of interest to team defense and they would want to hear how uh, Dinel is uh, presenting uh, itself on the matters in which they have an interest uh, in, big interest in. 
So, so I'm, I'm saying this to, uh, as, to apologize uh, to the Minister of Defense as well as the Deputy uh, Minister of Defense. I did uh, plan the, sec the acting sector that there would be uh, this change. Colleagues, having noted that um, you accept the change, uh, uh, the, in fact, it doesn't mean much. We've just reordered the, the agenda. No problem. No, no, no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, <clears throat> uh, Deputy Minister, I've introduced the issues. I know they are members of the, the board. Uh, you'll introduce the colleagues from the board of uh, Dinel who are present in the meeting, uh, uh, if there are any, uh, as well as the team that is in the meeting, DM, to uh, uh, support you in, in, in presenting your your, your item. Over to DM, uh, Papel. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, uh, Honorable Taba, and greetings to all honorable members of the Joint Committee on Defense, but also greetings to the Minister of Defense and the Deputy Minister uh, of Defense who are present in the meeting. Yes, the, the board of DINEL is here, led by the chairperson, Mayor Glorias Robe, and there are other members, Tami Magazi, Mike Hove. I mean, so Mike Hove is the interim group CEO, Tami Magazi is the board member, and we also have uh, from DINEL also Rias Sadujie, the chief restructuring officer. I'm mentioning it in full. Uh, because uh, the last meeting it was said, we, what is CRO? Uh, I hope uh, 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 Deputy Minister Taba Magweta knows it now. And we also have Ms. Tandega Sabela, the interim group CFO, and then also Mr. Sean Matthews, the group manager strategy. And from the department, we have the 18 DG Mudisane and accompanied by uh, other officials, uh, Naidu, and uh, I think uh, Bangani, uh, if uh, I did not see the name, but uh, I hope they are here. And, and then thank you very much for, for considering us uh, as the first item. And uh, and you said it's the last time we, we dictate. And uh, <laughs> we, we apologize for that. And uh, but as uh, you had recorded, the minister's apologies attending the meeting on the disaster, which starts exactly as we started. And uh, later there'll be a meeting with the president uh, at half past eight. So it's a preparatory meeting that he has attended. So the team will then be, 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 be uh, probably allow the board chairperson just to recruit and, and, and then hand over to the officials to present uh, from and will only come at the point when discussion has taken place and there might be issues that might require comments. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DM. Um, indeed, uh, I will invite uh, the Chairperson, uh, Ms. Clara uh, Sonobe, uh, to give us her remarks and then introduce uh, the presenter tonight for the committee. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you, GM. Uh, given the pressure of time, I didn't uh, expect to be invited. Only to just say good evening and really we appreciate the, the time we're given to present and let me not take too much time from the executive time. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now is the opportunity to, for the officials in the uh, uh, department stroke uh, DM. I don't know who will, uh, no. We will allow Dinel to present, yeah. Dinel to present. Thank you then, very much. Yeah, then the officials will, will add up. Well, exactly. No, thank you so much. Uh, over to you, um, uh, CRO. I guess the CRO is taking us through. Thank, thank, thank you, uh, Chairperson. It's uh, Mike Cover here, the interim group CEO. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, sir. I'll, I'll just make uh, opening remarks and then I'll hand over to, to, 
to, to the CRO. Um, I think firstly, it's a thank you for the opportunity to update uh, the committee uh, for the, uh, in terms of uh, where the NEL is uh, regarding its turnaround plan. Um, and I think also important to, to um, acknowledge uh, the members of the committee, um, the, uh, the minister, the deputy ministers uh, that are, uh, are here. We, we, we have uh, prepared a presentation that was shared with the, with the committee. Um, if, if you can move to the next, next slide, please. Uh, the, the structure of our, our presentation, um, the structure of our presentation is, is uh, as, we, as we are showing on the screen, uh, Chairperson, uh, we'll give an overview of the, of the denial turnaround status. We will talk to the, the supply and support role and the, and the record of denial. And uh, I think pertinently, the DENEL's ability to support uh, the National Defense Force. And we will uh, close uh, by looking at uh, the, the risks and the, and the conclusion. We, we have also noted the, uh, the specific uh, programs that, we, that you have uh, highlighted as uh, of particular interest to the, to, the, to the Joint Standing Committee. And we will make uh, some comments on that, uh, particularly in terms of our our engagements with uh, with AMSCO. Um, I think at this point I'll I'll then, uh, if you allow me, hand over to, to my colleague Ria Saluji uh, to take us through the slides. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, good evening, Chair uh, and members of the committee, uh, Minister and Deputy Ministers, members of the Denal Board. Uh, I'm going to take you through uh, the presentation. Because to a large extent, the issue at hand is how can and how does the NEL support the SANDF now and going forward? And, and what I'm going to present to you is the new turnaround plan and strategy for Denel, which has been approved by the board and, and, and supported by the shareholder from July last year, and we have been in the implementation phase. I take it that, that the, the presentation has been read. So I'm going to go very quickly through the first part of the presentation to say, to give you an indication as to how we have and are managing Denel in terms of its turnaround with the interventions we are currently busy with in order to position ourselves to effectively support the defense force going forward. As you are aware of the fact that over the last while, the last few years, it is common knowledge that we have been in a very difficult situation, both in terms of liquidity in terms of our ability to manage the organization, to effectively execute our contracts, to gain more and new revenue streams, uh, issues around HR, uh, the loss of human capital, and a whole range of things. And then to top it all off, we were hit by the COVID pandemic, which had a, a devastating effect on our ability, even further with regard to our export uh, uh, contracts. So it was a perfect storm that, that came uh, about a year, two years ago, and it just put Denel into a spiral which had to have some level of intervention in order to see how we can stabilize the business and take it forward. So what I'm going to present to you now is with the approval of, of the board and the intervention of the board, we started a turnaround strategy and intervention towards uh, the end of May, June last year. And, and the result of that is what I'm going to present to you to show to you what we have done in order to reposition Denel, to redefine Denel, in order to make sure that we are able to fulfill our role as a strategic capability in support of the National Defense Force in the Department of Defense. So as you are aware of the fact that previously Denel was structured along six different divisions, each with its own uh, uh, support infrastructure, each with its own uh, HR, its own finance, its own, uh, like I said, general common information management systems. It was bloated, it was heavy, and it was, it was just creating a huge amount of extra cost within the organization. And there had to be some alignment in terms of the reality of our revenue stream so that to match, match the, the structure to the revenue stream. We have also lost a huge number of people and, and human capital and skills in the organization because of non-payment of salaries and so forth. So we had to accept the reality that we were not the same organization in terms of our ability uh, uh, to exploit our human capital. 
So what you see in front of you here is that we've managed to retain our core skills in order to maintain a critical mass of key capabilities. And we have successfully been able to do that. And we have now turned the organization down, which has been more customer focused, more customer centric, in order to be able to give the credibility to Denel's value proposition to the end user, which is essentially the defense force and other defense forces internationally and around the world. So we have now organized into four different divisions and I'll quickly go through them. We've established a guided weapons capability and that was the old missile uh, <laughs> business where we are going to focus specifically, and this was a value proposition that distinguished Danel as a defense industrial capability from many others locally and internationally. In fact, this particular area of the missiles has given us international credibility worldwide. There are not many countries in the world that have this capability and we needed to focus on reestablishing this capability as a strategic one going forward. On the other hand, we've said that we wanted to also consolidate in the landward environment because that's a huge part of our business where, where we have now integrated a number of our landward capabilities, for example, infantry, artillery, armored vehicles, mechatronics, uh, infantry weapon products, and of course, our small weapons, ammunition and medium caliber munition supply, which was the PMP environment. We have then said that we've also historically had the ability to support the air environment. So we've established an air capability where we are doing things like military aircraft and engine MRO maintenance repair organization, aircraft systems integration. We're doing the RAF out there. We're doing the UAVs there, which is a critical element of our technology roadmap going forward. And we have a test and evaluation center in, in the Western Cape OTR, which is world-class. There are not many countries that have that. So we've consolidated into an air capability. And we've also now separated the integrated systems uh, division where we're doing the ground-based air defense uh, system for, for, for the National Defense Force, specifically to allow the Defense Force to secure our airspace. But in there, and there are not many companies locally that have a level five systems engineering capability, which is complicated integrated systems. And what we've realized that, that this is one area where new technology research and development and to offer new products and services and integrated systems into the wider South African uh, community. For example, into new other SOCs and other government departments, for example, Home Affairs, with the Border Management Agency, the SAPS, Transnet, ESCOM, FASA, and so forth, with sophisticated integrated security systems and surveillance systems. So that is a new division that is going to focus on civil security and defense solutions. And it will all be supported by a common shared services environment based on a market-oriented operating model. This has been socialized. It has been presented to key stakeholders throughout the system. And there's been significant support because we have now said that we want to focus on the different uh, elements of, of, of the battle space in the weapons environment, in the landward environment, in the air environment, and the integrated systems environment. So very quickly, uh, Chair, we said we know where we are. We're in a dire situation. We said we also know where we want to be. We want to be profitable. We want to be excellent, a center of defense industrial excellence. We have understood the external environment and its impact on us. We've scanned the internal environment. We've understood our shortcomings and deficiencies. And we said we need a dynamic, clear, communicable strategy with leadership that will enable us. To. So our first task was to stabilize the business, to stop the bleeding, and then to sustain it and then to grow it. And we're not talking about a three to five year plan here. We're talking an 18, 18 month plan. And we've already started that. And to a certain extent, we have already stabilized the business. And we're in between stabilizing and sustaining the business right now. So where are we? We have made a number of interventions. Firstly, we needed to secure shareholder funding. In the medium term budget speech of, of the Minister of Finance in October last year, the National Treasury has allocated a recap to Denel. And that recap is aimed at assisting Denel to stabilize and sustain the business with regard to our issues around uh, legacy payments and, and, and debt that we have, to have working capital, to buy material, to ensure that we are paying our people and to make sure that we are 
able to, to enter the market in, in a more dynamic way. It's essentially going to allow Denel to form a, a fundamental base, a platform, a stable platform upon which to grow the business going forward. But of course, there are certain interventions that we are busy with in order to make sure that we can sustain this business going forward. We've got to secure the customer base and the revenue. We've got to have new cost-saving initiatives because at the moment, it, the organization is just bloated and too heavy and fat in terms of the cost structure. It does not, the revenue does not justify our footprint. So we are busy with interventions in those environments as well. We have to make sure that we are streamlining, becoming more agile. We've got better processes and policies and specifically our new business systems that must underpin this and our business efficiency programs. One of the issues that has undermined our ability to, to be effective is our production uh, capability and our manufacturing capability. Our business efficiency processes need to be revamped in order to ensure successful completion of projects on time, on budget. And the fundamental thing that must underpin all of this is new policies that will, will lend itself to the new situation and the role of governance within the organization that must underpin everything that we do in order to lay the foundation for going forward. So what do we need to do? One of the issues that we need to do is that we need to also make sure that we are contracting properly. We've got to make sure that our contracts are solid and that they are not onerous on us as to now. We've got to make sure we've got marketing agreements and smart partnerships. We know that the now can never be the same as it was before. We've got to make sure that we develop partnerships internationally and locally for three things. One, it's access to market, it's access to new technology, and it's access to funding as well. We are not talking about SAPs here, SEPs here right now. We're talking about smart, smart partnerships to stabilize the business, create value, and to strengthen the balance sheet going forward. And of course, with all of this, we have shareholder support, the support of the Department of Defense, government support, and general stakeholder support. And we are communicating this widely to say that we have, to a large extent, redefined the shape of this organization in terms of our operating model and our vision for the future. So what have we done practically? We have said that there are six critical strategic objectives and interventions. One was to reduce the cost and increase our revenue. Our people have been demotivated, so we've got to make sure we've got engaged staff who are performance oriented and who are looked after, we have job security. And we've got to make sure that we have a, a change management culture that is a reflective of this new situation. Our people are the most important asset and we've got to look after them. We've got to have new revenue streams, okay? Increasing our customer base and making sure that that revenue base does not allow us to be dependent on the fiscus for future funding. We've got to become independent of the fiscus. Our supply chain needs to be effective. We have had huge problems in terms of our supply chain and material supply. Uh, companies do not want to, to, to do business with Denel or supply material to Denel because we've not been paying on time and often not even been paying because of our liquidity challenges. And without an effective supply chain, you cannot. Uh, uh, ensure your contractual obligations on time. We've got to have optimized planning and production because to a large extent, we're taking too long to deliver on our contractual obligations because of a whole range of things, planning issues, efficiency processes, production processes. We've got to revamp the way and manner in which we produce and manufacture our products and systems. And then of course, the can never be the same as, as before. We cannot be this huge organization doing everything in-house. We've got to look at smart partnerships, new joint ventures, obviously in a responsible way with the support and approval of the board and the shareholder and government. And behind all of this, Jay, there's a huge number of processes, monitoring processes, evaluation processes, performance processes, to look at how effectively you are implementing these strategic interventions going forward. So I can assure, yourself, Chair, and the committee that there's a significant number of plans and processes behind all of these interventions. So as I've indicated, all of this is getting towards one thing, is to reduce the dependence on the fiscus, but to maintain our strategic and sovereign capabilities in support of our defense force. 
In the white paper, and I'll come back to that later, the reason for Janelle's existence, we, we are not producing boots or ration packs or food products. We are the, we are the custodian, together with AMSCO, of the strategic and sovereign capabilities of the National Defense Force. We are also convinced that without the recapitalization, we will not be able to right-size the organization. We will not be able to, to increase our exports. We will not be able to secure the funding for these strategic and sovereign capabilities. We have ring-fenced already many of the projects that we have at the moment, and, and the CEO will talk about that, and he talks to some of the projects that we were referring to earlier on. And of course, all of this is within the context of managing this business in, in, in the best possible way during the COVID pandemic. What is important is absolutely the criticality of aligning with the DOD and AMSCO on these identified sovereign and strategic capabilities. And we're in discussions with the DOD as well and with AMSCO of how do we actually fund these strategic capabilities going forward. And that discussion is an ongoing discussion at the moment. I've indicated about smart partnerships already. There's a strong defense industry in this country that we need to rely on, but not to dilute the strategic position of the now going forward. We are also confident that if we do the right things, make the right interventions, in the next while we will be able to contribute significantly to the economy in terms of job creation and also new technologies and new manufacturing processes, which will put us at the cutting edge as a country in terms of defense industrial production. And of course, we are saying that at the end of the day, we've got to entrench our position, not only locally, but internationally in support of our foreign policy and to make sure that we are able to earn the kind of revenues to help to sustain these capabilities going forward. So where are we in a nutshell? We take a helicopter view, Chair. We've said we need to address the credibility of the NAL again, both locally and internationally. We've lost a huge amount of ground in terms of customers feeling confident that they can do business with us again. We've got to make sure we have a strong supply chain that partners with us and supports us in our new initiatives. We've got to make sure that we've got new smart partnerships. And most importantly, we've got to make sure we've got motivated and highly committed employees in order to go to that new vision. And we are quite confident that we can get back to that vision. Thank you. So where are we? I mean, just a few weeks ago, we were with the Minister of Defense and the Chief of Defense Force and our board chairperson in, 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 in IDEX, in, in, in the UAE, at, in Abu Dhabi. It's one of the world's biggest defense exhibitions. And I, I can assure you that the level of interest in Danel as a brand, in its products, and it was significant. And that has been the, the departure point for us that we need now to start getting back into the market, showing that we are credible, that we are sustainable, they can rely on, on us as, as a supply of sophisticated defense uh, technologies and systems. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, just to contextualize the importance of Denal, that in the white paper, in the defense review, and everywhere else, it says that Denal is the custodian of science, sovereign, and strategic defense capabilities technologies. And that has not changed. And we are still the systems house for design, development, manufacture of important capabilities going forward. Okay. But all of this rests on two things, is how we work with the DOD and AMSCO to secure these capabilities going forward in the national interest. There are not many uh, private defense sector companies that have been assigned this sovereign and strategic role. But it is also critical for two issues, and this is probably one of the most important things that we need to, 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 to understand with regard to the value of now or the value proposition. It allows us to have two critical things. One is security of supply. We don't have to depend on other countries for our defense industrial capabilities. And it has given us a level of independence as well. So it's security of supply and sovereign independence in terms of strategic capabilities. There are not many countries who have these two very critical elements that define and determine uh, uh, the industrial capability of our country and the effect that it has in support of our national defense force. And so that, to contextualize in the national debate and, 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 and discourse on defense, the important role 
that these strategic capabilities play cannot be uh, overestimated. Just to give you an idea, and this is a value proposition. So now, those pictures that you see that are real pictures. Those are world-class products. The a 2 air missile, the Data, the UAV, the Royfalk helicopter, the, the G6. These are capabilities that are sought after even today. Unfortunately, the geopolitics internationally has created a, a surge in, in, in the requirement for armaments. Of course, that has translated itself also for us as Denal, with many inquiries being made as to whether we can supply these capabilities. Obviously, it's an opportunity for us, but we've got to do it responsibly, and we've got to do it within the ambit of our statutory regulations. So you can see, I'm not going to go through all the detail there, but in the landward environment, we have significant capabilities. So in the Air Force, and this has been historically the case, we need to ring fence, we need to secure these capabilities going forward, Otherwise, it will have a detrimental adverse effect on our ability to support the Denial going forward. And that is precisely why we are engaged in this new turnaround plan and intervention. Now, Chair, all of this leads to the fact that the, these interventions is leading towards the answer to the critical question, how are we supporting the defense force and how will we continue supporting the defense force going forward? I know notwithstanding and all being the very limited uh, budgetary constraints, we have continued within the means that the defense force is available and within our own limitations, continue to support the, the SANDF in critical deployments. In the July unrest, the KwaZulu-Natal floods locally, uh, in our operations abroad, even though it has been limited because of funding constraints and because of our own internal issues that we've had to deal with, we have still continued to support within the limited means that we have the South African Army and the assets of the Air Force. Part of Denel's revenue and liquidity crisis, it's not just that Denel problem is, has been drastically reduced because of the underspending of defense funding over, over a period now. So when we say are our strategic and sovereign capabilities funded? Yes, to a limited extent. Can we continue like this and continue supporting these sovereign strategic capabilities? No, we cannot. There will be a critical mess that if we go below, we will lose this capability going forward. So this restructuring process, and we are in the process of talking about the core capabilities, defining what are these core capabilities for the SNDF within uh, a, 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 a budgetary constrained environment, uh, we've got to make sure how are we going to manage this to the best of our ability with the recap that has been approved by, by, by Treasury through the medium term budget policy statement, because that will allow us to create at least a firm basis. The fundamentals are in place, but we need now to move forward qualitatively into the new environment of making Denel successful again going forward. And of course, as we've indicated earlier, we cannot do it in isolation of, of partnerships with industry, creating new jobs, becoming mean and more agile with a flexible cost structure, but still maintaining these critical capabilities. So in these difficult times, we have been able to maintain a core capability that is still there on which to grow going forward. As I've said, we wanted to stabilize the business to a certain extent we have. We want to sustain the business in the medium term and to grow the business, to get our processes right, our efficiencies right, our business uh, manufacturing uh, processes right, and then hopefully to lay a firm foundation on which to grow the business going forward. <clears throat> so if I'm going to say, how are we going to do this and how do we support the SANDF, okay? Specifically in terms of also the projects in it. I'm going to assist the, 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 the CEO. He will take you through the actual capabilities and talk to some of the projects. And between the two of us, we will hopefully give you a context of what we are busy with at the moment in support of these capabilities and the projects that have been mentioned earlier. Thank you, thank you, Riaz, and thank you for, for thank you for the opportunity again. Um, in, in the opening, we, we mentioned the, the reorganization into capability areas where we moved from, uh, from six operating divisions and subsidiaries 
uh, and where we are moving to uh, for operating uh, uh, capability areas uh, with a shared service. Now, the, the first of uh, those capability areas is the what we call the air capabilities, where we are consolidating all, all capabilities related to the air environment. Um, this talks to the what we know currently as uh, Denel Aeronautics, um, where Denel remains the, the only uh, company in South Africa able to support the Oryx and the Roy Falk. As, as we know, the Roy Falk, uh, we are the, the OEM of the Roy Falk. Um, the Oryx, we go based on a French platform. Uh, we have done changes to, to that aircraft, and we are the only com company that uh, has the ability uh, to continue to support that. We have uh, in the past provided uh, upgrade solutions to, to the Oryx, and we are able to continue to provide the upgrade solutions for the Roy Falk going forward. So this capability is reinforced to ensure that it has focused attention towards supporting the South African Air Force. And it is through this capability that we have uh, today uh, continued to support uh, both the operation of the aircraft uh, locally, as well as uh, as well as uh, as well as uh, uh, deployments, uh, particularly uh, into the continent. Uh, we've continued to do this despite. Uh, uh, limited uh, funding. Uh, we have continued to ensure uh, that the aircraft, are, 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 when, when we release them, they are safe uh, to fly. Um, I think a, a big uh, issue that, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's been coming a long while, is the, the funding uh, to ensure that uh, the Air Force uh, meets its operational demands. There are two components to this funding. Uh, there is the, the unique uh, capability which talks to the people and the infrastructure which they now maintains, as well as uh, the, the, the funding for the material. And whilst uh, we have uh, received support in terms of uh, funding for the infrastructure and the, and the people, the, the, the unique human resources that maintains these platforms, um, we, there has not been sufficient funding uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, which has uh, resulted in, in some of the aircraft uh, uh, still being on the ground and not uh, being, being completed. But from a capability point of view, uh, Chair, I think we, we are saying that we have retained the capability. We are able to support uh, the, the, the Oryx and the C-130, and we have reinforced it under the air capabilities. The, the C-130 BZ uh, aircraft, the, the main transport aircraft for the Air Force, uh, Denel was involved in the upgrade of the aircraft with, a, with, a, with a, an international company. We continue today to be uh, able to support the South African Air Force uh, in, uh, in, the, in the maintenance of uh, this aircraft. We are, because this is not a, a South African aircraft, it is a, an American aircraft, but we are the only accredited uh, facility on the African continent that has the ability to provide the support. And on the back of this accreditation and with the engineering capabilities that we have, that supports the, both the Oryx and the Roy Falk, we have the ability to upgrade these aircraft because the electronics of these aircraft, with time, they become obsolete and need to be managed. And we, 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 we have that ability to upgrade these aircraft uh, going into the future. And um, what we've also done in terms of the, the, the air capability is the, the former or what we know as Denel Dynamics, where we had the missile business uh, as well as uh, the unmanned aerial vehicles. We, as part of consolidation of air capabilities, we have uh, integrated the unmanned aerial vehicle uh, systems. And it's a, it's a process that is underway as part of our restructuring effort in the company, uh, where we have uh, retained uh, the capabilities, the core capabilities, and uh, through, through a, an SLA between uh, uh, Denel Air Capabilities and Guided Weapons, we will be able to support uh, the unmanned aerial vehicles uh, going into the future. So what this does is it, it consolidates aeronautical capabilities uh, into, into the air capability, as well as uh, uh, looking at the, the test range, because the, the bulk of the test range activities relates to uh, aerospace uh, test and evaluation. Um, it, it, it remains that our, our test range, which is the overbed test range, 
um, is geographically located in the Western Cape, but we will manage it as an air capability. Uh, it also enables us to consolidate, particularly as we as we engage with uh, with our main user in this uh, air capability, being the South African Air Force and and also uh, international uh, uh, clients that uh, that are there. I, th I think we with with this uh, test range uh, in the recent past we have seen uh, some challenges in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, supporting uh, the capability i think there had been some delayed uh, funding we subsequently got the funding uh, we do have a capex backlog and and this is in all the capability areas and part of the the recapitalization um, uh, allocated in the medium term budget will go towards um, uh, upgrading some of uh, the critical infrastructure that we have uh, in all the capability areas. We, as I said, we do have a capex backlog uh, to, where we need to upgrade some of the facilities. And part of the planning is to ensure that we 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 upgrade uh, these capabilities uh, and continue to attract uh, even foreign clients uh, because this is how we will be able to sustain it. Uh, all the capability areas uh, going forward. Just as, a, as an indication, we have a planned uh, foreign uh, uh, testing uh, scheduled uh, for some time this, this year, in this uh, calendar year, uh, which helps in terms, of, uh, in terms of new revenue streams for, for the NEL. The, the landward uh, capability chair um, basically uh, consolidates what we know as the uh, Denel land systems uh, today, where we have the artillery and infantry systems, where um, with the challenges that we've had, we uh, were able to ring fence uh, the, the G5 and G6 upgrade programs um, to enable us to, to have progress, to have the project funding uh, directly go towards that capability and ensure that we maintain uh, sufficient skills uh, required for this capability. Um, we, as part of the as part of the the, the restructuring, uh, we will have a lean core of skills, but we will ramp this up once any major uh, new artillery contracts uh, appear. I think, as uh, as my colleague has mentioned, uh, in our international travels, uh, soliciting export revenue, there is a lot of interest, uh, particularly uh, in terms of uh, the artillery systems that uh, South Africa produces. The G6 uh, remains well renowned. And as, as uh, these uh, uh, develop into orders, uh, we will then be able to, to ramp up uh, some of these capabilities. What we've done, what we are doing, is, uh, is keeping a core capability uh, to be able to support uh, both the, the defense force and the export uh, market. The, the, the Badger, the, the Hoof Acer, uh, which is uh, the Badger Infantry Combat Vehicle, uh, will reside in this. Uh, in this capability area. I think we, we saw a major milestone uh, in this year where uh, in discussions with the, with the, with the army, um, we were able to, to, to deploy the vehicles um, uh, to show the capability and, and the progress that has been made in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the hoof ace problem, uh, where we saw the live firing of, uh, of the, the infantry combat vehicles where we also saw them uh, participate in the in the in the parade uh, where the commander in chief was uh, was present. I think this was a milestone, a uh, critical milestone for for the NEL, uh, for arms corps and for for the army. Um, I think uh, we do acknowledge that uh, there is work uh, underway, uh, particularly uh, based on uh, uh, detailed discussions that we've had with uh, with arms corps, where there is a pending an, an army project control board uh, that needs to give a final way forward in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the hoof ASTA project um, the the denial vehicle systems which is our mobility uh, capability um, um, is uh, formerly used to be uh, BAE's, uh, BAE land system South Africa and they now bought this uh, capability and um, we have been able to retain the critical skills as part of this consolidation, um, we we will uh, we will again uh, retain a, a lean core of skills, 
uh, we will then integrate this uh, into the landward capability. Uh, with this capability, we'll also see a, a geographical move uh, of uh, this landward, uh, of, of this vehicle system, say, uh, from uh, the East India uh, to, to, to the now uh, land systems and the uh, and the Pretoria West uh, uh, facilities. Um, this will ensure that we have a focused uh, landward capability that is able to, to support the, particularly the South African army and, uh, and other international armies uh, across the globe. Um, with, with this, we are retaining uh, OEM ship of uh, all the key capabilities that we have. We remain uh, the design authority of uh, of these uh, of these uh, vehicles um, and these weapon systems and uh, and certification uh, authority and uh, and uh, and of course an IP catalyst. I think there has been um, in the in the recent past uh, uh, companies uh, that have uh, indicated their ability to uh, to to support these aircraft, but the real IP resides. Uh, or, or rather the real capability resides with, uh, with the now, particularly in terms of uh, assuring that uh, the systems that get developed uh, uh, remain safe uh, uh, to be used by, by the operators. We, within the, the, the landward capability, we also are integrating what we, call, what we know as a a PMP, uh, which is the small and medium caliber munitions capability into this one landward capability. It will not geographically move, but from a management and the capability management point of view, uh, we will uh, consolidate it under the now landward capability. We are currently busy with, uh, with uh, uh, orders from, uh, from the defense force and the, and the, and the SAPS as well as uh, the export market. However, we, we have had uh, start stops uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of order execution in this, in this facility, uh, primarily uh, related to, to the old machinery that we have. And part of the, 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 the funding we will receive from the recapitalization will go towards uh, the capex that is critically important in that facility, as well as uh, maintenance and replacement of equipment. Uh, which is uh, because of its age is currently failing. Um, we are planning to uh, start this process as soon as uh, we, 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 we have the flow of the, of the recapitalization uh, fund. I think uh, equally important is the, equally important is the, is the, the smart partnerships where uh, my colleague uh, spoke about that we are also looking at uh, ways of partnering and um, not, not at an equity level, not where we are selling shareholding in the company, but where we are looking at uh, smart partners uh, that would uh, uh, improve the, the efficiency of the, of the organization. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, we are consolidating D, uh, DLS, the Nile Lens Systems, the Nile Vehicle Systems and uh, PMP to provide a single point of responsibility and uh, through these actions, uh, drastically improve efficiencies for the defense force. Uh, and I think the broader JCPS cluster, including the SAPS, uh, for, for requirements for armored protection, for mobility, and for firepower. We, we spoke about the, the missile capability. And, and I think uh, at this point, it's important to, to mention that um, with the with the skills drain that we've had in the company, where at a point in time we were not paying the salaries of employees, we this is the area that was uh, severely impacted by by by, by this uh, by the skills drain. Um, and and I think that there were a, a number of other contributory factors. Um, a part of it was the, there wasn't a, a lot of activity in the organization. We know that. Uh, there was an export, a large export order that was cancelled. Um, we, uh, as a result of all of that, the, we've seen uh, uh, the poaching of our skills by both local and foreign companies. Um, as I said, when we could not uh, pay salaries, we we are in the process of uh, restoring the capability uh, and capacity for the production of uh, of products in this uh, in this guided weapons, uh, which is going to be. A, a focused uh, missiles and precision guided uh, munitions uh, business. 
Um, there are discussions uh, with, uh, with AMSCO um, in terms of uh, the A data program and the production, uh, the Hamas, pro Hamas production order. Um, I think where, where we are is, uh, is uh, an acknowledgement that it would require a, a different business model. Again, smart partnerships uh, will go a long way here. Uh, where we recognize a uh, local capability, we reinforce uh, um, uh, and, and retain core to the now uh, parts of the, the missiles that are that are strategic core and sensitive within the now, and we we utilize the uh, local industry uh, to to do some of uh, the work. Uh, we have done some work around the uh, around this uh, these capabilities, um, and uh, we are converging with AMSCO in terms of. A, 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 the perfect model that would uh, would support missile systems uh, going into the future. So, um, as uh, to ensure that it is focused, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, um, re removed the the UAV business uh, out of this uh, this environment and consolidated it with the with the with the with the aerospace or air capabilities. We have also uh, 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 removed the, the integrated system solution business out of this so that the guided weapons becomes a focused uh, missiles and precision guided uh, munitions capability. This will ensure that uh, we again uh, um, uh, build on the sovereign capability uh, to ensure that we support the defense force. The, the last of, uh, of the, the capability areas chair is the, the integrated systems uh, solutions business. Now, this is where we do the, the ground-based air defense system uh, for the army. Um, we should, however, note that uh, earlier systems uh, that were delivered uh, by, by this team in, uh, in integrated systems, or as we call it, ISS, uh, such as the, the mobile air defense system and the, and the SAFS uh, military image inter 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 interpretation and exploitation computer systems are not funded, but these are capabilities that remain uh, with us uh, in terms of uh, supporting the defense force. Um, we mentioned earlier that uh, this is an area where we see a diversification into civil security, uh, where we can uh, assist uh, with, the, with the, the work towards a, a crime prevention and security in the country. We are engaged with the support of our, our Department uh, of Public Enterprises with sister uh, state-owned entities uh, like Transnet uh, and ESCOM and, uh, and the DOT's uh, PRASA uh, to, to look at how Denel can provide value in terms of uh, 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 improved uh, security infrastructure uh, and integrated uh, uh, security systems. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, so it's, it's me, Riaz, again. So uh, that shows how we have tried to intervene and made the interventions and trying to implement a turnaround strategy in order to support the capabilities, the strategic sovereign capabilities that are vested with Internel and Internel as a custodian of that. And we have also tried to highlight some of the very critical issues that are impacting adversely on the business at the moment. And the criticality of of receiving the recap funding that has been allocated but has not flowed yet. But the issue really at the moment is that in order to effect a proper restructuring plan and get Denel back into a sustainable uh, uh, situation, not only now, but for the future support of the National Defense Force, is that it is critical that, that the funding comes through with regard to our allocation that we have requested to support mission critical operational equipment like the oryx helicopter and and all the other uh, the transport aircraft the protection vehicles the ammunition both for the sandf and 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 the, and the south african police services it also means that without the kind of level of funding that we have requested that we will not complete the restructuring process and that means we will be continuously working from a position of weakness with regard to our ability to be sustainable going forward. So it is very critical that the funding that has been allocated needs to flow timelessly in order to make sure also that we, we stem the brain drain and the loss of skills that we have been uh, experiencing over the last while. We are quite confident that once the funding is in place and once the processes and, and contracts are up and running again, 
that we will attract and maintain the critical core of skills that are required to give the strategic capabilities that are required by the National Defense Force. So I think all of these business improvement initiatives, all the kind of interventions that we have planned, both in the short, medium, and long term, with regard to stabilizing the business, sustaining it, and growing it, is to a large extent dependent in an integrated way by the relationship with the Defense Force, with Arms Corps, and National Treasury, all working in tandem to make to, to, to give effect to, to this new turnaround plan that the board has approved with the support of the shareholders. So in conclusion, what are we saying, uh, Chair Percy? We have continued under very difficult circumstances, albeit in a limited way, to support the SANDF to the best of our ability, uh, as I've indicated during very difficult times. We have lost many resources, that is the reality. We have repositioned our critical capabilities, as we have seen with the re new restructuring into different domains, making sure that there's a support environment that is going to underpin the entire organization going forward, limiting the number of divisions and capabilities to those four areas that we talked about. We believe that that is the optimum structure that will allow us to support effectively the defense force going forward. So, of course, a lot of this depends on, 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 on our ability to execute effectively the programs that have been delayed. We have been engaged significantly with the end user, obviously the National Defense Force. Uh, and there has been a lot of convergence and consensus on the fact that we need to secure this capability vested in Janel going forward. Uh, and that how we do it together is a collective responsibility. And we are in that, in that process at the moment. So of course, I mean, a lot of this is also dependent on the credibility we reestablished in the export market. We had a few years back a significant export uh, order book, and that has obviously diminished significantly. There's been obviously a lack of confidence in our ability to deliver on time, on budget. And we hope that by this intervention that we are busy with, and we have been engaging in the last while, over the last few weeks and the last few months, with the international environment, the international customer environment, where there's been a significant interest again in the rejuvenation of Denel as a leading defense industrial capability going forward. Obviously, we're waiting for the, for, for the recap money that, that has been allocated within the medium-term budget policy statement, and that we hope that that will allow us to complete the restructure, but will also allow us to establish a foothold and a basis on which to grow the business from, from an operational, from a CAPEX, and, and from a funding perspective that we will not have to rely any longer on government for this funding. And just to say that Denel is the original equipment manufacturer, the design authority and support supply of major prime mission equipment of the SNDF. And that is a value proposition that is in the national interest. There are not many countries in the world that have this strategic sovereign capability in support of the National Defense Force and in support of our defense and security, security requirements. We are saying that we have made interventions to lay the groundwork, the basis on which to rectify some of the imbalances and issues that impacted negatively on the business going forward. We are relatively confident that with the support of the shareholder, with the support of the board, with the support of obviously the government, and of course, parliament, that we will be able to bring Denel back to its rightful position as a sovereign capability in defense of our country and in support of the National Defense Force. So, uh, Chairperson, with those few words, I think we have tried to contextualize the dilemma that we are faced with, the difficult time that we have come to. We are not out of the woods by any means. But I think we think that we have laid together with the support of the board and the shareholder. The fundamentals are in place in order to resuscitate this organization and bring it to its rightful position in support of the defense and in support of uh, our, our national defense force. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before you step out, <clears throat> step off the platform, um, can you just uh, brief us on the status of the contracts uh, you have with the various contracts you, you have with um, AMSCO, stroke uh, DOT? As I said, you remember that <clears throat> some of the contracts were three-year, uh, 2019, 
to 2022. And we don't know what is the status, the status currently. There's quite a few that yes. appear to have actually expired. Thank you, Chairperson. It's, uh, it's my call there again. Um, I think the specific ones you are referring to uh, relates to the aircraft support. Um, they were, there are three uh, contracts uh, where we support the Air Force. The, the, the C-130 uh, contract uh, was extended uh, for another three years. So we have a contract in place with the South Af with, uh, with Arms Corps to support the South African Air Force. The, the contract for the two um, helicopters, the Oryx and the Roy Falk, we, the, the contracts are coming to uh, an end at the end of, we are in, sorry, we are in an extension of those contracts. The extension is up to the end of March, uh, the 31st of March. Uh, we've, we've had extensive discussions with uh, both AMSCO and the Air Force. Um, and um, the information we have, we have not received an extension as yet, but the information we have is that we will get an extension up to the end of September, which will enable us to, to finalize uh, the contracting for the new three-year cycle. Uh, this is for the, for the Oryx and the Roy Falk. The information we have is that the relevant funding is has been uh, has been secured. It's a matter of uh, of uh, extension of the of the funding. Um, I think we briefly mentioned the um, the you mentioned Mohale, sorry, the Hoof Aster and the Beja program uh, that we are at. Uh, uh, we've had uh, quite extensive discussions with AMSCO, and there's a process of the of the PCB, the Project Control Board. Uh, 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 by the army that needs to, to finalize the way forward in terms of the uh, in terms of the in terms of the hoof Acer program. Uh, similarly, with the with Kamaz on the A data program, um, the there have been uh, extensive discussions, and uh, there is a new model uh, which is aligned to to the, uh, the the structure that we just presented. Um, and again, with the with the with the A data uh, production. Uh, a PCB, uh, there is a PCB decision uh, by the South African Air Force uh, that will decide the future of this. We, we, we don't have yet uh, that, uh, that information. Um, Mo Mohale, we've had delays uh, with Mohale. The, the delays with Mohale was, were as a result of uh, some of the liquidity issues that we've had, as well, uh, as, well as uh, which impacted on which impacted on both the, the people where we were not able to pay some of the salaries as well as uh, the suppliers. Um, in some instances with the suppliers, we've worked with, uh, with AMSCO uh, to support uh, us uh, with the supply chain to pay the, the suppliers directly. And in terms of the, the people and the salaries, we, we have been able to, um, um, uh, I think in the past 18 months, we have ring fenced some of these projects to make sure that the funding from these projects from AMSCO uh, pays the salaries of, uh, of those people that are working uh, on those projects to ensure that uh, there is movement. We, I think as a result of that and, and delays to place orders on suppliers, we, we had one of the major component uh, of the upgrade on Mohale, uh, which relates to the navigation system of the aircraft. Um, what, what we, we could not uh, place orders and uh, we have had delays. We have subsequently uh, had feedback from these suppliers that we should be able to, to have these critical systems uh, delivered uh, by July. And this will enable us to, to expedite activity to, to start to deliver um, um, the program to, to, to the Army, to AMSCO and the Army. Uh, we anticipate uh, major milestones uh, uh, that we start to 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 achieve major milestones um, from this year going forward. I think uh, one of the major milestones is uh, is training um, around August or so. The in terms of the the the, the Umponto, uh, chairperson, we I don't have the detail information, but what what I can uh, I can comment on is to say that we are currently the capability is also ring fenced. Uh, where we have an export order from uh, one of the European countries where we are busy with an upgrade program uh, for, for their missile. They also have a similar uh, missile, uh, which gives us the confidence that uh, the capabilities have been retained 
and we should be able to support uh, the surface to air missile uh, for the South African Navy uh, going forward. Um, um, the, uh, in terms of BIRO and our participation on the BIRO program, the, it was mainly on, uh, on the supply of, uh, of the GI2 uh, guns and, uh, and that the, the, the guns were delivered um, and that it, it, they were, I think there were some quality issues that we were, we were finalizing with uh, both AMSCO and, and, and the Navy. And then uh, once those issues are resolved, we, we should be able to, to in, within, uh, within the next month or so, be able to, to finalize on, uh, on some of these deliveries. That's the, the update that I have, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Now you, you have done very well um, on, on, that, on that front. Um, to, to the uh, DM uh, public enterprises, and, and the group uh, C, acting CEO, uh, I give notice that you will be visiting your, your facilities, um, your Daniel Aeronautics in, in Gauteng. Um, there's a new date. Um, our initial program has been affected by other um, you know, uh, programs in parliament. The new date is the 29th of, uh, of March. So I want to tour the facilities, take the presentation where, where <clears throat> when we see the, 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 our aircraft um, in that uh, facility. Uh, I thought I should just uh, give you that notice. All right, colleagues, uh, <clears throat> now we, we have done the presentation. Can I check um, if there are any additions uh, from the... DM and the, from the DM and the team, the Minister of Defence and the DM are also free to enter uh, the space. Uh, them being the uh, what the clients. Um, yeah, uh, if you could allow the team DG just on the high level engagement that they have with Treasury to ensure that the money appropriated uh, will definitely begin to start rolling in and 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 whatever were the condition that it is probably the treasury is not satisfied if maybe that element because that is the kickstarter of this uh, new general strategy thank you uh, thank, thank you very much and also whether there will be new money available um in the MTF uh, uh, period. Um, thank you very much. Over to you, uh, Acting DG. Um, thank you very much, Chair and Honorable Members and DM. Um, just to respond to that, we have been in constant engagement uh, with the National Treasury in terms of the timing and the quantum of the disbursement of the funding in order to ensure that uh, DINEL does, in fact, um, realize its restructuring purposes. We have been constantly engaging with the National Treasury regarding the conditions thereof, uh, wherein uh, we are now in alignment with Treasury to say that indeed, um, Danelle has met um, quite substantially the number of conditions that have been put in place and that the, mo the money that has been uh, allocated by National Treasury, it will be flowing through. So it should happen um, um, as soon as possible. So I do confirm that. Uh, in terms of the quantum that um, National Treasury has um, allocated to Denel, it has committed to provide uh, the 3.4 billion. And thereafter, we, in terms of what Denel has put in place as a restructuring uh, plan, it has been stress test and we're quite comfortable with that. And beyond that, uh, we are of the view that um, there will be no other funding coming from um, the fiscus. And also we will, as the department, ensure that the money that will be dispersed by National Treasury in line with the conditions, um, as the department we will be con continuously um, monitoring that that money is being used for exactly that purpose. And we will be holding uh, Danelle accountable in terms of reporting together with National Treasury 
to ensure that we monitor and track um, the progress thereof. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, GM. I think that um, covers it. Thank you. Maybe Chairperson to allow the group CFO to explain the internal uh, raising of money and that I think they've reached a quantum of 900 million going forward so that it could also be something that will help in the sustaining and the stabilizing and sustaining of the business and the growth later. Okay. A group, uh, acting group, so you all? CFO, CFO, Ms. Sabella. Sorry, a group, uh, acting group, CFO, Ms. Sabella. I think uh, she has stepped out. Okay, we'll, we'll revert. Yeah, I think uh, she might have stepped up. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Chair. It's um, my Kobe. Um, the we forgot to mention apologies for this. Uh, the, the acting uh, group CFO is not with us, but but DM, I can I can comment. Um, we the 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 the, the, re the required capital that uh, as part of the turnaround plan that we had identified uh, for this uh, turnaround journey was, uh, was 5.2 billion uh, rands. Uh, of the 5.2 billion, what we then committed to based on, uh, on some of the assets that we had in the business, in our balance sheet, uh, was, was 1.8 billion, uh, where Danelle committed uh, with the support of the board that we would be able to raise 1.8 billion and uh, the, the balance being the 3.4, uh, would uh, be the recapitalization uh, allocation from national treasury. We, we have had uh, a significant progress um, in, the, in, the, in the raising of the 1.8, where to date, uh, Chairperson, uh, we, we, we have raised about 992, just under 1 billion rands um, uh, with, the, with the liquidation of uh, the, the medical benefit trust fund. Uh, that we had. It is uh, through this initiative that we were able to uh, achieve stability in the business, uh, where we were able to uh, pay the backlog uh, of salaries and deal with the critical uh, creditors that are there. We, we appreciate that there is still um, another 800 uh, million rands that we need to raise. We have identified those assets. Um, there is an ongoing process. Uh, a part of it is the uh, um, uh, what we would call non-core properties that Denel uh, uh, no longer has a need for uh, after we optimize our footprint. Um, there would be uh, certain uh, uh, assets that are uh, not, not core to our support to the Defense Force. Uh, we are obviously engaged with uh, both uh, AMSCO, uh, primarily AMSCO in terms of the disposal of some of uh, these assets uh, to also get the uh, input, but uh, we are progressing uh, on these uh, and uh, these are being monitored uh, by both uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, progress in uh, National Treasury, DPE, um, and the, the, the DOD is also represented in the monthly monitoring committee um, as well as uh, as well as AMSCO. So there is a, a, an oversight uh, process that ensures that uh, the now delivers on uh, the commitments that it has made. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, before I, um, I, I, I recognize the, the call, before I recognize the colleagues from Parliament, uh, none of uh, members of the committee, let me afford the opportunity to the Minister of, of Defense. Uh, I don't know this, uh, the Chief of Staff who would want to say one or two things. Maybe let me allow the Chief of Staff so that the Minister uh, winds up of defense once up uh, the, the discussion or the presentation before I go to members. Um, Chief of Staff, uh, General Ramazona. Um, uh, Chairperson, good evening and good evening to honorable members. Uh, I just need to say, Chairperson, that uh, we have noted the, the presentation. Uh, but uh, 
I think that it is quite important that uh, from a military point of view, we take the presentation in the manner that it has been presented much further. In other words, to take deeper deliberations of, of the presentation itself in the Military Command Council. Um, I am saying so because there are still quite a lot of worries. And um, I, I don't want to hold myself back in, in mentioning this, but without going into so much of the details, Chair, what would be important maybe with this presentation is that you may wish perhaps to get some feedback from ourselves, so from the military, upon deliberation on this uh, presentation. And I say, I say so uh, with the full understanding that uh, the Minister of Defense is here. And uh, well, of course, the minister can give us a different direction, but from where I sit, I am too concerned uh, about the presentation. But Dinel, they are, we know we work together, we can recall them many times, and it is critical, Chair, that we discuss this presentation in the manner in which it was delivered. And I'm not saying that it is talking to the turnaround strategy, all right, I understand, but there are certain things that seems to be deliverables that can be done now. And those are the areas that I'm too concerned about them. But Chair, with your permission, let me leave it at that and reflect the fact that I think we'll undertake as the military to go and look at the presentation and then to maybe uh, provide you feedback uh, in terms of the presentation uh, wherein we would have deliberated with it. Thanks, thanks Chair. No, th thank you very much. It's good I allowed you to come in before uh, the minister. We, we, we take note of what you are saying. Indeed, we will have uh, an engagement with um, with with with, with uh, the military uh, command um, on the way forward in relation to some of these uh, issues that we are discussing uh, tonight. Uh, Minister, uh, your opportunity. Um, Chair, I uh, think uh, the chief of staff took words out of my mouth. It is impressive what we are hearing tonight. But the truth is I'm almost two years in the defense and this is the first time I hear that all the possibilities, all the OEMs are still in the hands of Dinel and we are limping. We have been running around the world. We have met how many times with Bo Airbus trying to get the OEMs because the, we, we, we can't fix, we can't upgrade, we can't do anything. So, Maybe for us, uh, with this particular um, input from um, Jinan, we must just listen and then engage. Um, I've taken liberty of double taking with AMSCO because I've been beating up AMSCO for failing to get what Jinan says it has been available. And, 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 and I'm, the word is flabbergasted, and I hardly use big English, but I am flabbergasted that I've been running around the world. Cap in hand, I went to India to get the ships fixed when Dinel is holding on to the OEMs. So I agree with the chief of staff. Let us have that and give us space to, to go back and see why, what is wrong. Because the other alternative is for me to start questioning the competency of, of CAF. If Dinan has been available, has been servicing. If they are extending this contract, I would like to know why, when we have been embarrassed over and over with not having a, 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 an aircraft that, is, that, is, that can be airborne. So it's a good story. It's not very nice. We hear there is an, a turnaround strategy. When I became minister, within six months, we tried to have a meeting with Dinan precisely because we wanted to get the details of what went wrong way when, when, when we realized the state of affairs. Now we hear they have everything that we need. So I want to leave it at that, but honestly, I'm happy I am on this meeting today because now we know that perhaps Tina, we are fast asleep in defense. We have things that don't work, but everybody around us working with us, talking with us. We are even extending contracts. 
when we should have had things flying and swimming. Boma last year, Boma 2021, just looking at the period I've spent in the defense. It's, it is quite embarrassing, but I am not sure I understand what this is all about. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, no, thanks. Um, your remarks uh, will help foreground um, the presentation that your department will be making um, in the near future. Now is the opportunity to take hands uh, from the colleagues, seeing that there are no hands uh, from the executive and, and the department. Uh, Mr. Murray and Mr. Raider, I've seen your two your hands. I start with you, Mr. Murray. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you to Denel for the presentation uh, and also for the comments made by the Minister of Defence and uh, the Chief of Staff. I think to a large extent, um, the Minister and the Chief of Staff has, uh, has, has used the words that, uh, that is reflecting of, of where we are coming from as, as also the, the Joint Standing Committee on Defence. My concern is again that it sounds fantastic and it sounds like Danelle is up and running and you know they they just need uh, the thumbs up and then Bob's your uncle and everything is in the air and all the 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 the, the ships are sailing no problem whatsoever however we know that there's a huge difference between what is being put on paper as a turnaround strategy and as, as, as steps from their side uh, and making that a reality. I will use the examples of our three prime mission equipment air, air, air crafts, the C-130, the Oryx and the Rayfalk. We have been consistently here from the, 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 the South African Air Force uh, and from Arms Corps about the challenges to keep them in the air because of the challenges at the NEL themselves. The other day, we had a presentation from Arms Corps. And um, if, one, if you take that information of how many Oryx aircraft helicopters are standing at the NEL aeronautics, at our tambo it is a significant amount it is probably double the amount of serviceable um, oryx that we've got that is standing there you will recall chair when we were at bloomsprite at uh, at 16 squadron they told us that four rayfog four of the 11 that we've got were already at the NEL at that stage for four years, and it didn't return. We have heard from the, from the Air Force about the challenges with the C-130. We have at one stage heard that there will be three or four, or even five serviceable. But then when it comes to delivery, we realize that maximum one might be available with the consequence that the, the, that the Air Force had to charter foreign cargo aircraft to, to provide logistical support to our soldiers in the DRC and in, in Cabo Delgado at huge cost because the NEL cannot produce and deliver. So if I, if I read, the uh, slide number 23. That means that there's a turnaround strategy and all of those risks are dependent on money being available, money from other sources other than the, 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 the what I can refer to as the bailout amount in, that, was ref, that was appropriated uh, in the medium term budget. And, and a lot is dependent on the, the, the increase of funding to the, to the Department of Defense. We know from our medium term um, uh, budget that has already been submitted, that, is, that money is not there. 
So how do we move forward? If I can just ask a few questions. Um, it's been said that the NEL is, is capable of upgrading the Oryx, the Rayfog, and the C-130. Is that in terms of commitment or is that in terms of expertise that is still available? Or does that include operating money, operating budget, funding to, to make sure that they will not run into financial problems when they need to buy spare parts or uh, uh, whatever equipment to do those jobs? Um, the state of, of, of Hoofaster, we have heard that there's money for phase one. And it seems like a lot has been built on the capability uh, and the delivery of, of, of Project Hoofaster. We know that there's no money beyond phase one. So where does that leave us? I want to ask a question on the partnerships of, of the NEL. Um, right in the beginning, or relatively in the beginning of the presentation, there was reference made to the three companies, RDM, Burry Dynamics, and Hensolt. Um, what is the current relationship with those three companies? And what is Danelle's shielding in those three companies? Now, Burry Dynamics is a UA UAE company. Um, if we can get a bit of more information on that, and whether Barry Dynamics is doing similar work as the Nell Dynamics has done, and how would that impact on that? There's been a couple of times been referred to partnerships, smart partnerships. What does that mean in reality, in practice? How will a smart partnership work? Um, is that someone that will take up shares? Is it someone that will take the responsibility of providing the the operating capital? Is it someone uh, like the Defense Force that will increase their budget significantly? What does that mean? When you look at your page eight um, on the slides, there are quite a lot of, of, of approaches and progress has been put there, but no timelines, because we need to know about the timelines. When will what happen? And also, on your slide 16, where it is referring to, to capabilities uh, and, 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 and getting further capabilities. We, we also need to know what is the kind of timelines that you are referring to. Is it 18 months? What will happen in 18 months when you say that you can, some of these you can, you can deliver in 18 months? How would that work? What do you require to deliver that in 18 months? And what are the timelines beyond that? Because you said that if there's these risks as well, that if that is not funded, then you will have challenges. So what is that timeline for losing this capability, this, 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 this um, uh, significant and strategic capabilities? Um, if I can ask you that funding that has been provided over the medium term, that bailout demand that I've, that I've mentioned. What else in terms of funding do you require to make all of these turnaround work? Because it seems like the only funding that you have raised is from the, um, is from the medical fund. Uh, and that means that out of your own operating capabilities, you haven't raised any money, any money um, beyond that. When I recall very clearly in the past where uh, Arms Corps had to cancel some of the, the, the guarantees on certain projects so that Danielle can use that uh, leverage to raise funds in the capital market at banks or in, 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 in whatever other funding market. Is that still the case? And, and, you know, do you need some of these guarantees, further guarantees to be, to be cancelled? If I can ask you, um, how many, I've heard a couple of times about acting CFO, acting this, how many positions in the NEL is currently acting? Some, and I'm referring to the strategic positions. And, and what is the plans to fill those, those um, 
those positions of the prime mission equipment that you have listed that you are either the OEM or that you are providing to the to the defense force in terms of, of um, um, you know strategic and prime mission equipment how many of those products do you sell to other clients domestically or internationally and on that matter of your current business that you do your order book or that you are actually delivering what percentage is reliant on the SNDF? what percentage is on other local customers and what percentage is on exports that we can just see the makeup of this organization that is now being turned around uh, this new denel on the ips you have you have talked about a lot about the IPs as well, and because IPs can be an asset. To whom does that IPs belong? Is that government? Is that Department of Defense? Or does it belong to 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 Danel? Because I know in the past, the IPs and the values of the IPs was in your in your balance sheet, and I know that there was a there was a dilemma between um, Arms Corps and Danel in terms of. In, in, in whose balance sheet must that IPs be reflected? Um, chairperson, on Hoof Easter, you know, what, what is the status currently of Hoof Easter beyond phase one? Um, you know, that, that is kind of important. There are still so many questions, but I will stop at this stage, Chair. Um, you know, that we can just see whether there are more follow up questions that one can put afterwards. But thank you so far. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mare. Um, it's going to be you, Mr. Raider, uh, and then Tabu Mose after you. Thank you, Chairperson. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so I'm going to not take as much of a technical approach from a military point of view that Mr. Maria has taken. I'm going to rather focus on, on my area, which, uh, which is more, I was a corporate banker for 20 years, and I've seen a few turnaround strategies. And what was presented to us is, it, it sounded quite good, but already I had some questions around cash flow projections, timing, uh, source of funds and, and quantum, because the, the, there was numerous references to the recapitalization. Um, so, so I already had some questions about that before we heard uh, from the chief of staff and the, and the defense minister. Um, and unfortunately, those two comments um, blew the entire presentation out of the water, because the reality is that Danelle at this stage has got one substantial, reliable partner and customer. So any turnaround strategy that they have needs to take that relationship into account and really make sure that you're on the same page. And what we heard today is that there's, we know, never mind the same page, we're reading different books at the moment. So, so I, re I really believe that that Danelle and the Defense Department needs to get together, and sit down, and bash these issues out, and talk about what what, what the expectations are. Now, Chairperson, I know that there's been talk <clears throat> in certain circles about some state-owned enterprises moving back out from the department, the SOE department, uh, going back to to kind of their home departments. Um, and it would make, I think, some sense for Danelle to, 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 to go back and fall under, uh, under the military uh, portfolio. But I don't believe that the defense minister wants that on her hands at this stage. Yeah, I think she's got enough nightmares as it is. Um, but I certainly believe that, that the lack of communication here indicates that, that if, if not coming back under the defense ministry, there's a need, an urgent need for much deeper communication and discussion. Um, because ultimately, profits don't keep a business afloat. Uh, um, 
turnover doesn't keep a business afloat. Uh, projects lined up, a project pipeline book doesn't keep a, a business afloat. What keeps a business afloat is cash flow. If you don't have cash, you're dead. And we've seen this with the inability of Denel to meet their uh, responsibilities in terms of paying the staff, which is your most basic uh, requirement as, as an employer, as, as, as a business. So, you know, I, I would just like to hear, you know, on, on what basis have you been doing cash flow projections, um, which will justify the expenditure of substantial amounts in the, in the, in the medium term expenditure framework, um, which would recapitalize you um, and make you viable again? You know, so so on what basis are you doing those projections if you're not talking to your your only customer that still trusts you because you've lost all your others? You don't have other customers anymore because you've you've, you've broken trust repeatedly. So I, I, I really I, I wonder if one can place any rely reliance on a strategy that's been formulated behind closed doors with, without discussing. And I would love to hear um, from Donnell, uh, you know, is this a desktop exercise or, or, or has there been extensive communication, collaboration, and at what level? Because it's certainly not uh, uh, with the minister or, or, or chief of staff. So I think there's a massive issue there. In terms of that recapitalization project program, you know, I think that, that the, the fact is, it's always difficult to put a quantum on, on, on this type of thing. Certainly, if you haven't done your cash flow projections uh, reliably, you know, to, to say, well, we need, to, we need X to get out of the hole, uh, you know, on, on a desktop study that it, it can't work. But, you know, wh what's the total requirement? So you've spoken about the, the medium term budget and said that, you know, this is gonna solve all your problems, but how certain can we be that there's not going to be uh, further need further down the line? Uh, you know, and I mean, obviously there's always circumstances that can change over time, but, but really there needs to be a, a reasonably high degree of reliance on, on your calculations. And, you know, we, frankly, we need to see that because at the end of the day, as, as members of parliament, we're going to pass a budget uh, at some stage. Um, and we, we need to know that we're not just throwing good money off the bat. And I think that's the biggest issue um, at the stage is, is if Danelle is to have a future, um, how much is going to cost us? And are these going to be pure capitalization? Or is there any chance of this, you know, being effectively a loan where we start to recoup money back from Danelle? Uh, over time. So I just think the financial modeling is really important for me um, to, to understand uh, and, and to turn this from what effectively sounds like, yeah, a good story, a fairy tale, uh, even uh, into something that, 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 we, that, that can become, you know, uh, a true story and something we, we can look forward to. Um, I, I just, I was quite enthusiastic about the presentation when we received it, and then very disappointed when I heard the additional comments. Um, Chair, I, I feel that we need to, to interrogate that original presentation much more closely now um, uh, and, and, and look and see, you know, what are the issues that, that underpin this big recovery and this big turnaround? Because uh, I'm not convinced that it's been done from a basis of realism, but rather from a basis of something that, that a, a dream someone had, it be, as I say, behind closed doors. Thanks, Jay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Raider, uh, Mr. Mutle. All right, Th thank you very much, Chair, and uh, good evening. Uh, you'll pardon me if I, my, I've got the uh, connectivity challenges. I hope, uh, I don't uh, lose connectivity until I conclude. Chair, uh, one, uh, the issue of uh, OEM, and I think we have had uh, 
discussions with uh, AMSCO as well as uh, the department uh, 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 represented by Chief uh, uh, Acquisition Material, something like that, uh, Chief uh, Defense Material uh, around the issue of OE OEM. And I'm glad that uh, uh, the presentation uh, in their turnaround strategy, they spoke to, to that issue. Which then, uh, uh, if indeed there is a, a collaboration between uh, both DINEL, AMSCO, and the department to address particularly that uh, issue of o OEM, we might uh, uh, get somewhere. But the problem is that um, uh, DINEL needs to build uh, capabilities to be able to be accredited so that it supports the defense force uh, uh, sufficiently and efficiently in terms of uh, its manufacturing capabilities uh, once accredited to address, to close that gap that we, 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 we had engaged upon and uh, the intention to localize this manufacturing and uh, uh, in the main disrupt these uh, 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 cartels that uh, are milking uh, 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 the state under the pretext of this uh, OEMs. Number two, uh, th this is not the first uh, 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 turnaround strategy. However, I must give it to, to, to the presenter that uh, 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 it gives a very promising pic picture. However, Chair, we have been sitting with a, a presentation to an extent that we are no longer impressed by this uh, presentation. What will impress us is practical uh, 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 production and uh, practical support given to uh, the South African National Defense Force because currently, currently the situation is at, uh, 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 of the Defense Force. In fact, in all arms of services, uh, is dire because uh, they don't receive the necessary support that they should be receiving from uh, uh, TINEL and the local industry. Uh, hence, those contractors are, are, uh, that they are speaking to, when you talk to chief of, chiefs of uh, various services, they will always complain about uh, not getting uh, sufficient uh, support out of uh, those contracts. But be that as, as it may, uh, uh, Dinel must be able to, 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 to say to us, uh, how best are they going to support going forward? I know the issue of uh, funding uh, will arise, but in the interim, taking into consideration the financial challenges that uh, 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 the country finds itself in, how best are they going to ensure that that turnaround strategy, if it is not just another strategy because it's not the first strategy, if it's going to be a practical strategy that will ensure that uh, 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 Dinel uh, brings back uh, 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 or salvage whatever capabilities that are left and begin to build on other capabilities that uh, will primarily support uh, 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 the, the defense force as their, their, their primary objective. Two, uh, I mean, three, Chair. I have not had the strategy speaking to how will they attract uh, the skills that they have lost, which is very important because uh, 
uh, whatever that they do, if they do not get back the skills that they have lost to ensure that uh, they rebuild on those capabilities, uh, this will remain uh, another presentation or another strategy that uh, at uh, some few years later when uh, the incumbents are no longer in office, the new people, the, the, their predecessors will also come up with a strategy. It will be a strategy on top of strategy, so forth and so on. And on the issue of uh, 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 lack of resources, when it comes to who face there, it's a total different story because uh, resources were made available to the tune of seven billion that was spent on Tinel to ensure that they deliver project who face there. Today, to date, there's uh, nothing to point. So the, we, we need clarity because we can't point all the challenges or, or have an expectation that all the challenges will be resolved by uh, 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 financial resources. It can be correct. Some of the, the, the challenges that are there uh, they are man-made, they need uh, people with brains and willingness to resolve them so that we are able to take the organization forward. Because uh, 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 it's, a, it's an important organization. Dinel, it's a, it's a, it is a pride of, uh, of uh, this nation, if not of the defense force. Therefore, in conclusion, uh, Chair, uh, but this one will go straight to the minister. Uh, 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 or the department, the sooner they start preparing for the accommodation of Dinel to be located in the department, uh, uh, the better. Therefore, they must not be far apart. Uh, their engagement, uh, as uh, General uh, uh, Raman Swane, the chief of staff, has been saying, it mu they must not engage this uh, presentation uh, from a point of view of Dinel being uh, there the defense force being there, the mindset should now begin to change now that the president has also made the pronouncement that, uh, in fact, uh, the Department of uh, Public Enterprise will cease to exist and all these entities will have to be relocated to, to the departments where they, will, uh, they belong. So Dinel will be one that must come back to defense and that uh, those interaction, we, we, we must be ahead, we must be proactive, start engaging them as if they are in-house and be able, equally this, this strategy, and Dinel must start behaving in such a way that uh, it's back home so that there's no gap between Dinel, AMSCO, and DOT. Uh, the sooner we do that, the better, so that we do not react when that time's uh, 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 is on our doorstep uh, for Dinel to be back at home. So I think uh, in that way, it will assist and uh, synergize uh, the, 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 the relation and the work that AMSCO is doing, as well as uh, uh, the implementation of this uh, uh, turnaround strategy. And it must have the buy-in of uh, both uh, 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 the board of uh, uh, Dinel or, or I mean the board of Dinel, uh, AMSCO and DOD as the main uh, driver in that uh, instance. I, I'm saying this last point uh, because uh, uh, if we continue to treat Dinel as an outsider, we might uh, we might miss the point going forward. I'll I'll, I'll rest my case that chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Tabu Mutle, uh, Miss uh, Honorable Alexander Bukas. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you for the, the presentation. Chair, uh, in agreeing that uh, Daniel wants to bring back its rightful position and restore the reputation and value, uh, I want to uh, focus on the credibility on certain divisions, especially in the management divisions. In the 2012 presidential review chair, some of the challenges that was identified was uh, weak governance structures, poor program uh, execution, poor working capital, uh, high cost, uh, cost base with declining revenues. 
Now, Chair, my question therefore is, they receive money in the 1920-2020-2021 and an additional amount in 2022. So what is the percentage uh, of the completeness of this ten turnaround plan? Secondly, Chair, who was responsible for the plan? Was it outsourced? Thirdly, Chair, does the plan have uh, implementation phases? If so, what was the impact specifically on the situation that was identified as challenges, uh, specifically on weak governance and poor program execution? Then my second uh, uh, question, Chair, is about the smart partners. Honorable Mare alluded to that, but I want to know, Chair, what is a smart partner and did they already identify them? And what is it that they think that that smart partnerships will bring to the table? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all these comments, uh, colleagues. Um, let me reserve my, my comments. Um, I align myself with the, all the comments that the colleagues have, have, have raised uh, tonight. Um, but let me <clears throat> not say uh, anything at the moment. Uh, is the chair still in the meeting, the chair of the, of the board? Uh, yes, Chairman, I'm, I'm still in the meeting. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I maybe wanted to ask for your indulgence first, get the CEO and the CRO to respond to the specifics, and then I can comment after that, if you do not mind. Okay. No, no thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I think your, your comment... Uh, at this stage, as as, as the as, as as the board as represented the board, is is critical. We have had um, the comments uh, from from the colleagues, uh, but let me not waste time. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, DM Public Enterprises, how do you want us to go about dealing with the responses? Uh, who do we ask uh, to come in first? Thank you, Chairperson. Ch we'll ask the, the 18 DG just to come in around the explanation of uh, why we ended up where we were, but however, how the efforts were made to ensure that uh, we get this 3.4 billion, which was appropriated, and, uh, and, 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 and obviously explain a bit about the, the uh, this has not been the first turnaround strategy, and there seems to be doubts that this will work or not work, and why we are emboldened that it will be. Then the 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 the, the chairperson of uh, Dinel, the board chair, also want to say something, and then I'll come uh, as soon whatever the gaps that arises. But taking on board definitely the Minister of Defence uh, and the Chief of Staff comments about the gap uh, and uh, and obviously have been there two years and not been able to get to know what exactly is happening and they are suffering and the pain is understandable and we did express it to yourself chair in other forums this pain uh, of the army not being having the capability and uh, and and are we sure now that going forward those things will be there, but also taking the chief of staff that they will engage quicker, sooner, go through this particular presentation with dinner and, uh, and, and probably arms core so that then we can then uh, give those elements and the questions that might be hanging, uh, we, we quantify. Thank you very much, but uh, can we start with the DG? Thank you very much, uh, DM. Uh, DG, um, the platform is yours. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Diem. And thank you very much, Honourable Members. And also thank you very much for the questions. Um, the question was asked as to um, why are we confident that this time around, that this particular uh, turnaround plan is uh, going to be implemented and executed uh, successfully? 
Um, I agree uh, with the um, honorable members to say a plan um, is a plan, but the test thereof, um, it's in the results that it will bear. And uh, one of the critical elements of making sure that the plan is going to be executed is by being able to have um, the people with the skills and uh, competencies to be able to execute timelessly on the plan in line with the project uh, timeframes and um, um, milestones. And what is important is that given the fact that in the past, um, there was no funding that was being allocated to Denel. This resulted in the morale of the Denel staff um, being eroded. And as a result, they actually bled a lot of staff. However, with the Minister of Finance having now pronounced uh, explicitly and indicated an amount that will be um, dispersed towards Danelle. It gave the market and as well as even the people who had left Danelle a new ray of hope that indeed government and the state is behind this entity. And therefore, even some of the people who had since left Danelle on the back of this um, announcement, they have um, raised their hands or expressed an intention to come back because this has been the big um, challenge that has been plaguing the entity. Because in the absence of this funding being um, explicitly committed by the fiscus, then this entity, it was always going to be at the risk of any creditor tipping this entity into liquidation. And therefore, it makes it very difficult for any employee to commit and be um, focused in this particular area. That is the first point. And the second point is, with this funding that has now been committed, um, there has been on the back of this um, before, um, there's been these building blocks to say, once you can get this, what are the critical success factors that will ensure that they now stick it turns around and where the order books would be there. And um, that's why we're always saying, if this money comes through, then these are the committed orders that then can be executed because then there'll be the skills, the money, and focus everybody to ensure that that which has been committed or the orders, then they can actually be uh, translated from the order book in, in terms of being converted to the order book. In terms of the question that was asked, I just wanted to indicate that um, the acting DDG of um, defense in the department, Mr. Weekend Bangani can also come in here to say that um, this has been um, an all encompassing and collaborative effort whereby uh, the different stakeholders were engaged and their views solicited in terms of how do we craft this so that it becomes a bankable and a feasible plan going forward. So I think, um, and that includes a very critical stakeholder that the uh, honorable members have been uh, talking about uh, being uh, MSCO and as well as including um, um, the labor. So that has been the plan and uh, this has been what has been uh, happening. And uh, with that being said, uh, Chair, um, to probably even give um, effect to this, um, I can ask uh, Mr. Bangani Weekend, who is um, the DDG in the department, who has been engaging closely with the different stakeholders on this issue, um, to show that this has indeed been, there's been a steer com that you can begin to unpack in terms of the composition, the frequency of meetings um, as to why we actually landed here and why we believe that this particular uh, turnaround plan, uh, why we believe that is actually feasible and viable. Chair, uh, um, through you, um, I'm just going to ask Mr. Bangani just to quickly um, um, highlight the structure and the composition and the frequency of this meeting that has been happening through your indulgence, Chair. 
Two minutes, uh, Mr. Bagani. Two minutes. Thanks, Chair. Uh, uh, thanks, DG. Let me recognize the, the presence of the Minister and the Deputy Ministers and the Honourable Members in the meeting. Yes, the first minute is gone. Uh, the, 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 the intervention to, that gives us uh, confidence that this turnaround plan is is going to is going is, has got all the chances of, of succeeding. Uh, is the the level of intervention that Dinell has received? I mean, here we're talking about a 3.4 billion rand allocation in the MTPPS. In fact, there's also an allocation or there's an intervention by the Minister of Finance to clear Dinell's debt uh, of over 3.2 two billion rand. So Dinell has been assisted in two ways, cleaning the debt uh, and, and also the capital injection. So effectively, Dinell before used to pay 300 million rand in interest only uh, from the debt that they accumulated in their books. Now with that intervention, the, 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 debt, the debt burden has been taken off Dinell's uh, shoulder. So in other words, the, the, the intervention has been comprehensive uh, uh, to, to, to allow the strategy to succeed. So in terms of the, 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 the stakeholder environment, uh, the conditions to the, to the allocation is that every month we shall meet DPE, Department of Defense, AMSCO, and National Treasury to look after the conditions set and to check on progress made in implementing the, 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 the turnaround plan. So Chair, um, I would say there is clear and a clear focus on supporting Dinell to achieve its 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 turnaround plan. Um, it, in, in fact, before it used to be a bilateral issue uh, between DPE and Dinell with the part-time participation of national treasury, but now there's an active involvement of all these partners in in trying and and and, and, and support Dinell to to ensure that the turnaround is. Is achieved. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to compress that in, in that two minutes, Chair. Yeah. Okay. You see, uh, DDG and the acting DG, <clears throat> the, the reason uh, my colleagues here on the platform um, don't have any, um, don't see any reason to celebrate the 3.4 billion rand that you are talking about. You seem to be, you know, uh, um, uh, excited that you got the money is because you you owe the Department of Defense uh, a lot more than this. I mean, Tabo spoke earlier on that uh, that the project of first year was initially one point two billion rand for phase one, and. Um, uh, Seven point eight billion rand uh, for phase two, but you already have been paid seven point five. But this, we have not even completed phase one. So there was an advance uh, payment. You know, so in other words, uh, we are sitting here in this meeting. I mean, the department is sitting here at this meeting as one of the major, in fact, is the major uh, creditor. What would you say to that on um, uh, to to that comment in brief? We pass. Should I come in or or can I ask? Just, just to that comment and we pass. Okay, Bangani, can you just quickly comment it quickly? Don't be long, don't be long. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, there's recognition that the woof is the is the big elephant in the room that uh, need to be resolved. Uh, uh, and we we, we we acknowledge that uh, certain things that are supposed to have been done have not been done or certain things went wrong in in the management of the contract and I think it, 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 to be to be fair I would say there was um, insufficient oversight both from 
from the executor, executor which is Danel, and from the from the from the AMSCO side in terms of just tight management of that program. Uh, those advance payments. I think people met and convinced each other to pay each other those advance payments as to whether the milestones were 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 achieved or not. It, it was between Dinell and Amsco to arrive at that level of of conversation of of changing uh, of exchanging uh, money between themselves. But I agree, Chair. This is a uh, it, this is one we can do all these strategies and and and, and all that, but. All the advance payments already paid, all the bank guarantees that are associated with that contract. If we do not have a, a solution on the roof, whether in a, a reconfigured manner or or in in in, in a in a restated manner, we we run the risk of of putting Denel into in in, in in serious danger. So uh, the the issue of finding a solution on the roof is the problem. It's a it's one of the major uh, critical success factor in the, in terms of the long term future of the of the company. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Let's then deal with the rest of the questions. Um, uh, uh, Tichi, uh, who, who who do you uh, delegate the rest to? Um, uh, I think, um, Chair, I, I dealt with uh, some of the substantial ones. And I probably would like to uh, afford the chairperson of the board uh, an opportunity to respond and um, the executive team to respond on those matters. Thank you, Chair and members. No, thank you. But let me take the executive uh, team as represented by the acting uh, CF, uh, CF CEO before I go to the chair of the, of the board. Uh, acting uh, CEO. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I think we we have uh, taken on board the the comments uh, that have been made um, by the chief of staff as well as uh, as by the minister. We we have also noted the the date of the 29th of March, uh, where there will be an oversight a visit, and I think. We, we will use that opportunity. I think there's a, a lot of detail uh, that has been asked that we may not be able to immediately respond to, um, but we will use the opportunity of the 29th of March uh, to give the, the committee assurance in terms of uh, some of the processes that we've gone through, some of the challenges and, uh, and, how, and how we move forward. Um, I think uh, most definitely the the, the the opportunity to present to the military command council, uh, we will also take that, um, and uh, and uh, we we will also uh, follow the protocols in terms of presenting uh, to to the minister. I think in with the oversight visit, uh, I think there were very pointed questions around the how the NATO supports the, for instance, the South African Air Force and some of the key uh, projects. Um, and the, the capabilities that are there. And I think uh, the, the opportunity of, uh, of the 29th, will, will, we, it will afford us that opportunity to, to go into greater detail, to give, uh, to give insight into, into that. The contracting models, I think, remain key in terms of how the aircraft are supported, uh, especially for, for the South African Air Force. And I think uh, an appreciation of all the components of the of the of the contracting model uh, would give a much uh, a deeper appreciation. Um, I I think there was a so so if if I may the uh, we, we will deal with the specific project uh, uh, issues that were raised uh, where we may not necessarily have a, a deeper detail but we will go into that detail. There was a question around the the shareholding in the associates. Um, and the uh, barrage dynamics um, um, versus uh, the, our capabilities here. Uh, I think just to respond to, to the shareholding uh, in the associated uh, companies where we own a minority share, um, there are three companies that uh, we, we highlighted in the presentation. It is uh, Rhine Metal Denial Munitions, where we own a 49% stake and uh, the German uh, Rhein Metal Group, 
uh, owns 51%. I think uh, um, that is the current uh, shareholding of, uh, of, of, of the company. The, then the next associate company is uh, Hensold uh, Optronics. Uh, the company has changed names over time, uh, but the current name of the company is Hensold Optronics. We, we did a, a, an, an equity deal with, uh, at the time it was uh, Carl Zeiss Optronics of Germany. Uh, the company name has evolved over time uh, to what it is now called the uh, Hensold Optronics. We own 30% of that company. Uh, that company is also based in the uh, domicile in South Africa, um, and we continue to own the 30% uh, shareholding. Barich Dynamics is a, a joint venture company where we own 49% stake uh, in a company with uh, the edge group of uh, the United Arab Emirates. The company is domiciled in Abu Dhabi uh, in the UAE. Um, and we own 49% of, uh, of that company, as I say. Um, the, the capability of that company is primarily on the back of, a, of an IP arrangement we had with them uh, to produce the, 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 what we call the, the precision-guided munitions, uh, which was a development that we did uh, here locally uh, that we housed in that, uh, in that company. Uh, and that is the capability that is currently uh, executed uh, uh, in that company. I think uh, as part of the, the, the founding documents of the company, there were very specifics in terms of uh, uh, the markets where, where, where Barish Dynamics would be active in and so forth. I mean, that is all detail that we can make uh, visible uh, to, to the committee. Uh, in terms of the missile business, it does not uh, necessarily, it does not compete with the uh, with Denel Dynamics or guided weapons uh, as, as we will uh, evolve the capability to. But we can make, uh, we can make all of that um, uh, visible. Um, the, 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 there was a comment around the timelines and I think uh, we can make the timelines visible um, uh, in terms of some of the critical su success factors that we have identified. Um, the, the, the smart partnerships, I'll ask uh, my colleague, the, the chief restructuring officer to also comment uh, in terms of some of uh, the key issues uh, that have been raised. But, but I think Chairperson, uh, what, what, what I'm really asking is that the, the, to, to be afforded the opportunity to, uh, to have a second version of this presentation on the 29th, where it will be a facility visit as well as uh, uh, us responding to the, the specific questions that are raised here. Um, I'll ask uh, my colleague, uh, Rias. No, thank you, Mike. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I mean, I think in terms of the smart partnerships and whether it is equity partnerships, right now, given the eroding of the value within the now from a financial perspective and also from a human capital perspective, it, we are not in a strong enough position right now to look at any or entertain a discussion around any SEP issue because the value has been eroded to the point at which there will be no value extracted from this. So that's why we said we need to engage in spot, smart partnerships to access funding, new markets, and new technologies. I mean, the balance sheet is not strong enough right now to engage or even consider selling off any part of the at the moment until we have a stronger balance sheet. And that's why we said we want to move towards this concept of smart partnerships, which will allow us access to funding, new markets, and new technologies. And I think that was the whole issue around, uh, you know, how do we move forward? We, we have arrived at this point from a very, very low base. And I'm sure there's been many instances uh, where the committee has heard different plans, different strategies, different interventions. How are we dealing with specific projects within the defense world? I think for the first time, after a long period, there has been a new intervention at management and leadership level. We have a much stronger relationship with OMSCO at the moment. We have a joint committee, standing committee with OMSCO at the moment, where we're looking at specific projects, technology development, funding mechanisms, performance issues. We're engaging with the National Defense Force as well in a very significant way at the moment, right at the top, the highest level in terms of how we can support the, the, the National Defense Force as well. So I think this is a process. We're coming from an extremely low base. We are carrying a huge amount of baggage from the past. At the height of uh, in 2015, 
We're almost about 7,000 people. Today, we are reduced to about 1,700 people. And we're going through a restructuring process. We appreciate fully the fact that the, 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 the loss of confidence in, in Tenel and its ability to, uh, to, to uh, deliver on its mandate uh, has taken a substantial knock. And we are saying that, yes, together in, 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 in partnership, in real partnership with the different departments that are responsible, DPE, DOD, uh, Arms Corps, uh, the Defense Force, broader industry, there is a significant negotiation and, and discussion and discourse that is going on at the moment to how to regain the sovereign strategic capabilities that is vested in Denel. Because if we lose those sovereign strategic capabilities, we have gone a long way. Uh, we will have lost a huge amount of ground in terms of our independence with regard to defense capabilities. And that is why it is so critical strategically. Yes, and we've gone through a difficult, difficult period financially and otherwise. Loss of capital, loss of people, lack of orders. And we're trying to go from ground zero, actually. And with the support of the board, with the support of uh, our shareholders, with the support of DOD and OMSCO and the Defense Force, Yes, there's still a long road to travel. Yes, there's still a lot of interaction and discourse that needs to take place and a lot of confidence building. But, but we, are, we are relatively confident that we've got a plan that has been socialized with many people. We have interacted with the minister and will continue with the Minister of Defense, with the Chief of the Defense Force, with the different arms of service chiefs. And yes, it is not by any way from, uh, out of the woods. We are we are facing an uphill battle. But what we are saying in our interactions with the key stakeholders, that we've got the fundamentals in place, how we manage to implement the fundamentals and the oversight mechanisms to see whether we are doing the right things will determine the success of this. And it is a collaborative, integrated approach. So what we're saying, uh, Chairperson, is that we have a long road to travel. It is not easy. We have to motivate our people. We have to instill confidence in our customer and client environment, in our strategic partnerships, in government again, based on all the historical difficulties that we have gone through. And I think it is, those are well documented. But we are relatively cautiously optimistic that together in partnerships, in consultation, in discussion, in discourse, playing open cards with the deficiencies and weaknesses within the organization. And there are many. We are trying to rebuild this organization from almost a zero base. And I think when we interact with your good selves, when you come and do the visit, um, we, we, we will definitely give you a better insight into the interventions we are busy with at the moment to address the specific questions that have emanated from this discussion. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, you'll understand I'm not rushing these discussions um, because they are at the center of uh, uh, our the country's sovereign uh, capability. Um, so it is in that context that I'm surely allowing it uh, to go on. Now I'm going to take uh, the chairman, sorry, the chairperson of the board, and then go back to the DM. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, maybe four points on my side. Uh, one, um, I need to uh, make sure that the honorable members do not believe this is a desktop exercise. It was uh, thoroughly gone through with the executives and the board and and so the support of the board is not from a desktop arrangement it's from proper arrangement and, and understanding of where we are as a business that's number one uh, two uh, as the board even though we finishing three years now we have to take ownership of everything uh, I'm referring now to the whole who faced that question in terms of what was and what happened and all of that, that now becomes our issue. And at some stage we have to deal with those things 
and not say we were not there and so on because as a board we take ownership of everything and that is actually in front of, of us. The, the, the second point I wanted to mention is that uh, definitely with the minister and the chief of staff, we have to do something drastic in terms of communicating. I'm worried that both of them are concerned and then there's definitely something uh, not right about that. So we will prioritize that and to make sure that the minister and the chief of staff are properly uh, socialized around uh, this turnaround plan. At the moment, Chairman, there is a, a monthly monitoring uh, committee and that is comprised of DOG, uh, National Treasury, CPE and AMSCO and DNL. And this thing deals with the, uh, the, the, the is, is part of the pre and post disbursement conditions of the recapitalization. So that committee deals with that. It, it meets that frequently. We also do have a, a steering committee between AMSCO and DNL and that is even more frequent uh, because AMSCO as a client and us as Danelle, we need to place everything on the table. And that is almost two weekly, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm part of those, uh, of those, of those meetings. So here there's a point here where I'm saying that it is a pity then that the minister and the chief of staff are not um, as, what is the word? We need to do something drastic about communicating properly then to the minister and the chief of staff and to close that gap. But in the meantime, the departments are working together, DOD, National Treasury, DPE, and AMSCO, and us as Daniel. We do this, Chairman, because as Daniel, we are in trouble. We need to place everything on the table and tell the truth. Uh, to just about everyone, lay our hearts there and do the right thing. And that is why this frequent meeting between AMSCO and Daniel is also, it is also happening. Why then would we be confident as the board on this turnaround plan is because in our minds, it has been socialized as much as possible. We then, if there is a gap, it is with the minister and the chief of staff we must apologize for that if uh, uh, we haven't done it that well. We have to close that gap and do the, the right things. But Chairman, I'm sitting here, I'm comfortable. It's not a desktop exercise. Uh, it is a socialized, properly socialized uh, turnaround plan. I just want to say one more thing, Chairman, that the, the, the issue of Daniel is quite complicated. There is issues on our side in terms of operational efficiencies and all of that. We also have to deal with a Denel under siege and that Denel under siege requires a particular tactic. And one of those tactics is that if you cannot uh, take over Denel overnight, your best way to do it is to tamper with the IP and take the people. That is the reality of the NL. It is an intellectual property kind of entity. That's our value. And so as we look at this turnaround, we're dealing with all these uh, straightforward operational inefficiency issues. We are also dealing with normal corporate high technical issues of if you cannot take over the NL, do the most drastic, take people and take IP. And this is where we are. And as a board, we are very much alive to that. And together with the executive and also DPE and as much as possible with AMSCO, the tactic to counter all of that, uh, which requires a little bit more sophistication 
than just a turnaround because there's, a, there's we're under siege and we have to do the right things. But uh, Chairman, I must say in this meeting, I want to apologize if the minister and the chief of staff are not as informed as we thought they are, we will correct that and we will make that a priority. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Tabo, is your hand still up? Or is it like I hand? Mutlai? I think it's a leak I said. Uh, I will take uh, the, 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 no, the- It is, Chair, sorry about that. It is up. All right, uh, one it's minute. It's not up, I was just saying it is a legacy hand, uh, so okay. I will just uh, lower it. No, thank you very much. Uh, I will, thank you very much, Tabo. I will then take uh, the DM, DOT, and then end with the D, DM, uh, public enterprises, because um, in his representative uh, capacity, he is the process owner. Um, uh, DOD, uh, uh, DM, uh, Terban McWhitland. Uh, Chairperson uh, and uh, honorable members and all uh, uh, participants in the meeting this evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Chair, I don't want to say much uh, <clears throat> because I think a lot has been shared and uh, a lot uh, is there for us to take home from today's uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> the one clearing uh, area that I uh, observed in our discussion <clears throat> uh, is that uh, we do not have uh, as the department, as the Minister of Defense and military veterans, we don't have the line of sight uh, of the areas of the turnaround strategy that are speaking to the weaknesses that led to the uh, or the factors that contributed to the decline of Dinel or the near demise of Dinel, uh, because uh, those uh, areas of the turnaround strategy, I would imagine, uh, is what uh, Dinel uh, accounts for to the Department of Public Enterprises. <clears throat> uh, in our discussion, uh, you see what led to the decline of Dinel is not shared in the turnaround strategy. Uh, Dinel, as we all know, has not uh, suffered this massive setback because of the decline of the defense budget. Um, because by 20, around 2015, uh, Dinell was actually posting positive uh, dividends uh, in its, uh, in its uh, operations. It was making profits. Uh, I remember very well uh, the Ministry of Public Enterprises convening a press conference to speak to the successes of Dinell. Um, <clears throat> so they are, in my understanding, in the business processes of Dinell weaknesses that led to the decline of the, of the, of the, of the enterprise. Uh, internal control, you know, a regime, the fiduciary duties of the, uh, of the board. Uh, some of the issues were ventilated at the, at the uh, uh, State uh, Capture Commission. <clears throat> and those issues, uh, they must be part of the turnaround strategy, I presume. Um, the, the other point, which is an observation on my side, Chair, is that uh, the, there is a financial storm that is battering Dinel. And 
the turnaround strategy uh, is uh, very coy to admit that uh, uh, the funding available to, does not sufficiently fund or make that turnaround strategy successful. And as a result, we, uh, we will not be out of the woods. Um, the turnaround strategy budget from what has been shared, it's five, we are talking 5.2 billion to fund that turnaround strategy. Of the 5.2 billion, Treasury in the medium term budget policy statement allocation is advancing 3.4 billion. But of that 3.4 billion, 3.2, according to uh, what uh, was uh, mentioned by Mr. Khobe, 3.2 goes into the debt legacy issues of Dinel. Uh, because even in the presentation, it says there that uh, uh, the allocation is critical because there are a number of creditors who are threatening liquidation uh, of, uh, of the net. Uh, <clears throat> so what treasury is good, the money that treasury is advancing, advancing is, has been valuable and very important to, to save or to protect Dinel from liquidation. That has been achieved. But there is 1.8 billion that is needed and which Dinel says they will raise it internally through defraying of some of its assets and stuff like that. But uh, decisions and the speed with which that is going to be done appears, I may be wrong, to be uh, demanding a lot of time and attention. And uh, for a decision to be made timelessly about what is possible and what is not possible in the projections that were made in relation to raising these monies internally. Um, my understanding is that uh, the raising of these monies internally by Tinel speaks to uh, the uh, releasing of non-core entities from uh, Tinel stable. Uh, unfortunately, at least with the information that was shared with the ministry before, um, the, the criteria that uh, seem to be uh, thought of around how to go about this. That criteria does not uh, sufficiently take into account the interest of the Department of Defense. Uh, because what in some of the proposals that I saw is suggested Yes, Dinel may believe it is not core uh, competency that we must retain, but from the users of these technologies and systems, um, it is uh, 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 respectfully in my observation, core entities, unfortunately, and there you find that there is a, a conflict of interest uh, be, uh, within the stakeholders that are driving this process. The, of course, we, we, we must appreciate the, the uh, project team that is meeting on a monthly basis. Um, and uh, the reports to the Ministry of Defense from those engagements must, uh, uh, must be you know, uh, submitted. Uh, expeditiously so that at the level of the ministry, we are in step with what uh, is being done uh, to arrest the situation around Tinel. I thought I should just make those points, uh, Chair, uh, as, we, as we conclude this, uh, this discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DM. Um, now I hand over to the 
the, the DM public enterprises who will then conclude, uh, uh, make a concluding remark. Over to you, uh, uh, DM public enterprises. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thanks for all the inputs including the remarks by D.M. Magueta and the earlier remarks by the minister and then the chief of staff on their expression of concerns. And, and I think uh, you yourself, we have also put in figures that uh, no one is explaining in the depth element and what is being owed to the defense by Dinel. And, and then I think when we go to the meeting of the 29th during the oversight visit, uh, our last both uh, Dinel and, and the DPE um, uh, to really begin to look at what is this quantum going to be doing in terms of dealing with the debts and then the percentage that is going to go into the business core to revive and energize Dinel as a competent uh, structure whatever restructuring that has happened with fewer people, but efficiency emerging. And what is it that is there? And, uh, and the fundraising that DNL has, has done, which is almost 920 million, short of 800 million to be a billion, that already has been secured uh, as a result of the restructuring. And 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 then downsizing and restructuring of the business, and then the savings that are coming in there, they will then go into operational budget towards the enhancement of dinner. And if they can just package it also, and then also they need to respond to the two projects that we have been saying: uh, phase one done and phase two not yet done. Where to put money? What happened to that money? And, uh, and then and are we still on phase one? Ah, we have moved to phase two. Uh, so that explanation also be given. And then, and, then, and then thirdly, obviously, to then say with this business entity going forward, we are likely to impact on the servicing of the aircraft and things that uh, the defense has been complaining about. Uh, is it coming out that picture on the 29th? And you need to satisfy yourselves that indeed, uh, with this plan, we think uh, this will go. And I hope by the time you come, the first trench of the money will have been released because since the expropriation in October, no cent has gone in. Uh, so since October until March now, no money has arrived, uh, but money is there and likely treasury has refused it as allocated. Uh, which is now it's money safe in the kitty, unlike if it was just general money in treasury, which one day they may move it to other projects when I save you. It has not been reinforced, and that was the achievement just a few weeks ago to reinforce it because realizing that the financial year is ending, and then we thought we might lose the money. So it's reinforced, and then the first trend will definitely be going, and hoping therefore that it will then have a show and roadmap of the trenches coming in and counted for by those monthly meetings, and then indeed towards uh, rescue Dinel, but also reviving the industry around the, the defense industry in South Africa, localized as is and, and so forth with those international partners. While the chair of the Dinel did not also allude to, they've done a bit of roadshows to seven countries to now begin to look at the international market which is a pipeline of 30 billion rand. If we do well in servicing a dependable client, which is the SNDF, uh, we are likely then to be begin now to say, whatever we produce surplus, we can also sell to the others because the defense can only buy up to so far. And then yet we need to produce, the more you produce the cheaper, uh, the production, and then you are able then to have partners uh, in the international market that we can sell some of the goods to them. And that is a 30 billion rand pipeline. If we do well in it, uh, we'll also begin to see the rise of Dinel once more. They have done seven countries so far. The minister upon me arriving, he said, hey, we need to go in there and help and ensure therefore that Dinel succeeds in, in, in opening the markets. 
so, so that as it rises, it's able also to compete, compete competitively uh, uh, win in those particular markets. But also the issue of raising funds, also to be engaging with the board and then Dinell and say, besides uh, whatever that we, we come from the fiscals, you need to go back to where you are able to deposit positive re uh, results. But in going there, who are the financial people that we can bring in close up on what the small partners as it's already a strategy that has been identified. And what is it in that smart, uh, I mean, small uh, partnerships that can people with finance and technologies that we can partner with to also revive without uh, compromising the independence of DNL and, and, and as a soul of our defense uh, industry in South Africa. And then and, and also as a dependable uh, service provider to the defense that must be capable on A, on C, and on land with all the artilleries and what have you. So one will be very much engaged in that uh, as part of the assignments that the minister is due to, to give to me, but in expressions in our meeting has already alluded. So I think the 29th meeting will do so, but in the addition, the principals uh, at the level of the executive will make sure therefore that they also meet and then they are able to, to have confidence that this project is on the rise and there are no doubts left. Uh, and the engagements that the board uh, chair has in, uh, alluded to and the apology for the minister of, to the Minister of Defense and the chief that they seems to be seeing this package for the first time. And they've been going all over the world thinking that denial is no more. And, uh, and then I think uh, let them go and lose in that gap soonest so that we move as one uh, across the uh, governance system. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, DM. I think that M Minister uh, uh, Modise, I'm sorry I omitted uh, you on the list. Uh, please, over to you. Chair, thank you very much. I know we are all tired. Certainly some of us can do with some sleep. But um, I noticed that uh, we're not... Okay, let me paraphrase. Uh, DM um, Babela, the one thing that is always uniting the committees of defense is when you touch the prime equipment. What makes the South African National Defense Force capable of defending the country? All parties across are united. And we unite because without it, then we do not have a country. Now, I notice also that um, that uh, you and DM Makweta seem to have more information than some of us. I do notice that uh, it may be forgotten, um, Chairperson, that in fact, when Ryan Metal was selling off and there was a threat of that 49% being sold off. We had, I had to run to uh, Minister Patel and ask why we were not informed. And remind people how Dinel came into existence, the, re the relationship between AMSCO and Dinel. When I became minister, I was on top of AMSCO because I blamed AMSCO for not doing their job in making sure that um, they keep a tight rein on Dinel. Now, it is not an, an client uh, uh, relationship as far as I know. I'm not sure if we have, have reviewed the legislation. If I remember well, um, Dinel's responsibility was in the past to disperse the monies which were put through to Dinel via the, 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 the budget of defense. Dinel was supposed to be our re-equipper, our upgrader, our innovator, but that the state put in monies because, not just because they are Dinel, because 
most of them, um, I think at least after 1994, they were owned privately. So for us, when the state puts money aside for DNA, it is because primarily we are looking at re-equipping, at upgrading the DOD. I, am, I may be wrong because as I say, I have never had the chance in the two years I've been around here to get any briefing from Dinel, despite the fact that we've been asking. So the chair of the board may understand that I may be outdated because I might still be in the 90s as to the relationship between Dinel, the military, and Armstrong. So I'm one person, DM uh, Bapela, who's happy that that money is reinvested. I hope that money does not move until we have really understood what this turnaround strategy is all about, that we understand in whose interest it is, that we are not stupid when we have been trying to look at the different entities, companies that fall under the umbrella of Dinel and try and pair them up so that they begin to make money across the world, just so that they can, we can get, a, 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 you know, what we can't afford from the industry because at least we would have helped to connect them with partners. I am very clear, a, a, a Chairperson, that there is a, a, a new venture on the OFIM between ourselves and India that we are facilitating it through um, school, and that I am not sure we were going to hand it on the platter to Dinel with what I have heard today. Because if we are not your primary client, if you have sat around for years and seen us struggling, if you have not been shamed as Dinel that we can't even have aircraft, if you do not understand the implications of not having enough aircraft to continue upgrading and keeping the pilots of the, the, the Air Force upgraded, their flight hours up, then you do not understand just how deadly this relationship has become. And yes, we want to work hard to make sure that, and that is why we stupidly, and I think it is stupidly, Chairperson, because I'm angry, that we went out of our way and said from the defense, we are going to facilitate that the family of Dinel meets before the end of this year. If we can, we want that meeting now of the defense industry, now and before the, the end of this month of March, because we are worried, but also because we know what role Dinel can play into the fiscus of this country. So we're worried about jobs, we're worried about losing. I have had to meet up with South Africans who are in the Emirates. I have had to reassure those South Africans that they are still valued citizens of this country, that they have not done anything wrong. We have had to contend with the anger within the DOD of the IP that has gone. And our point has been, we can't run away and, and say we are angry at people who have had to survive. Now, if we are going to play any role, if we are going to see and have a cordial relationship with Dinev and with this department, then we must be very clear. I will always stand with the capabilities, the need for the National Defense Force of South Africa to be properly treated by entities that are funded by the state of South Africa. So for me, it, I don't care how many business partners you make. I don't care how much money you make, but for as long as Dinel wants to treat Dinel as a private company that is run privately, that has no responsibilities towards re-equipping and upgrading the main a, a client of, 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 of theirs, which is the South African National Defense Force, then we are at loggerheads. Then we are on for something which will not end well, because I will fight to have this relationship properly understood. And as I say, maybe I'm still stuck in the 90s, but I will go out of my way 
if private entities are coming up with since the South African economy who are interested in entering the South African uh, uh, defense industry and link them up so that we can get the offsprings as a department. So maybe, maybe we are not just looking at Dinel as making money. It is about the survival of the defense force. It is about the survival of South Africa. Now, we are a regional power, a very diminished regional power, which is not properly capacitated because of the failures. And yes, uh, AMSCO knows I beat them up time and time again. They are beginning to tighten up. And the, those meetings you're referring to are at our instance insisting that if they will not talk to us, maybe they will talk to AMSCO and AMSCO must take responsibilities. And yes, I'm still very angry about the 7 billion, the, 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 the money that was transferred to Dinel when Dinel was going down because had we known and had AMSCO been on its toes, that money might have come very handy in trying to get us where we should be today. Now, there is no way you are going to get money and start thinking about expanding and whatever at whatever when we are at grief, when we are not uh, 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 adequately upgraded. So I think maybe the, the discussion is not as simple as the turnaround strategy is good and is not good and how much money. It is about whether or not the, man, the original mandate of Tinelli is still on the table or not. If it is not on the table, we must be told by the head of state, by treasury, that we must go all out like we tried to do from last year, talk directly to, to the holders of the OEMs, fight with them get other ministers in their home countries to try and help us. Kanji, all alone, you are sitting on the OEMs. So for us, we are seeing self-sabotage in this relationship between yourselves and ourselves. And I'm being very hard because it has been painful to come back into the defense family and see it so reduced. So sometimes even members across parties are at loggerheads because all of us are fighting for the same thing the re-imaging, recapacitation, fighting so that the stand-up takes its place so that these things that are happening around our borders, it is because we have diminished capacities. And that is why everybody's taking a chance on South Africa. And so if we are not too friendly tonight, uh, Chairperson, it is because we are concerned. It is because that meeting had better take place. That meeting of the 29th, it's, for me, Igari, it is too far. We need to be getting to understand this. We need to understand where you are going. We need to understand these finances so that maybe if we are going to be twinning companies that we shouldn't be twinning, we should look elsewhere. But I'm saying at the end of the day, we want capacitation. It has been painful. The, the visit, at, 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 at this IDEX was difficult for me. Shepherdson, when companies say, we want to sign up with you, but we're not going to talk to Janelle, we'd rather sign up with AMSCO. That meeting of the 29 must come as, must take us back to where we can even start redefining the image, which we are trying to restore of AMSCO, the image we are trying to restore of Dinel. But Dinel must know we are your prime customer. If you are thinking that you are going to get the money out there so that, no, you are going to do what is right first. Those OEMs remember that Dinel existed at a particular point simply to make sure that, that SADAF existed and was well equipped. And fundamentally, we need to go back to the founding uh, 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 legal papers of, of both Dinel and, and AMSCO. And we are saying that whatever property you have in terms of those papers must fall back into the Department of Defense. So when you run around and you do things that upset us, Remember that when you are being taken to the cleaners, 
you are actually affecting the standing of this whole department. So I, I can't compliment you. I am upset. I speak straight. I will be very happy if we can fix things. So DM, uh, if you are going to run around DM, uh, uh, without really understanding why we are parallel, understand that we are hating because we don't think we've been treated fairly. We don't think we've been taken seriously. And because we, we're not taking the defense seriously, we're actually not taking this country seriously because some of us seem to think that you anchor a country's standing on just how well it can defend itself. It doesn't matter how much money is in the banks. It is how much you draw respect, how much you are able to protect your own. So Chair, I just thought I should say this before I get a, a heart attack this evening from being angry at the relevations that you are getting. If you have those OEMs, get on already because we want, we want to see our, our equipment ready. We can't be this uh, laughing stock. When Namibia calls us and say, wait a bit, what is happening to you? You must be getting a knock too because it is about your country. It is not just about defense. So Chair, I thought I should just put uh, my feelings uh, uh, open. I am upset. I am not very happy. If we are able to say we will meet each other up on the 29th and we will remedy what I think is important for us to remedy, then maybe we will be mollified. But um, it is not about me and the chief of staff. It is about the whole. And the reason why the chief of staff said, let us take it to the, the COD. It is because we think all the heads of arms must understand what is going on here. Because all of them are moaning. Some of them we've been beating up. Some of them have actually been beating up AMSCO, thinking that it is AMSCO that is failing and this and this and this and this. So if we can have that meeting that brings us all together and we can close the door and we can sit down and say, these are the mistakes, this is how we do it. And then maybe we can understand your turnaround strategy. I have a lot of sympathy to Mr. Saluji, he's new. Lots of sympathy to you, but if you are saying, Nani, you are inheriting a mess, this mess, has put us all together and we must fix it. We must fix it together because we depend on a denial that cares for the defense. Thank you, Chair. I'm sorry I've been long-winded. No, Minister, you 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 had to pour your your heart your 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 heart all out. Um, I allowed this. Uh, I allowed that deliberately because I don't think we'll have another platform um, where like like this one where we uh, tell each other uh, how we feel about what we see. And uh, I think in your opening uh, remarks, you said it all, uh, that um, when it comes to the defense of this country, we are united. It's across political parties in this committee in particular. I'm sure we represent uh, our political parties when it comes to the defense force. There's a reason why we don't use it as a, as a what you call a play ball. We don't bring in politics when we discuss uh, the defense, I mean, matters defense um, uh, uh, and the, the, the South African uh, defense force. Uh, the, I mean, they can't speak for themselves. We must speak for them. Those soldiers, including the top uh, brass, they can't speak for themselves. They are so disciplined. And uh, and uh, but uh, we are their mouthpiece. And um, because uh, the, 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 the role they play, uh, besides that is in the constitution, but they are actually, um, um, uh, it's it's the front line, um, front line defense of of the of of the country. So 
so you touch the SNDF, uh, you you touch um, all of us. So it is in that context that we are raising these issues and uh, not because we wanted to offend uh, anyone. When, when out of 11, Rui Fak, I mean our uh, fighting capability, out of 11, only four uh, is serviceable. And um, out of 39 uh, Oryx, only about 17 uh, are serviceable. Of the C-130, six C-130, only one is serviceable with uh, three undergoing um, uh, service and two unserviceable. And um, the, 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 the hoof yesterday, Hoof Yester project. It was the cutting edge a project of the of the army, and was supposed to have been released in uh, to have been uh, produced in 20, 2013 and now twenty twenty three. Um. So so in no no in fact the first the first the first phase was supposed to have been done and and dusted in twenty in twenty thirteen, but it's twenty twenty three, we it still has not been concluded. But you said we'll discuss that when we meet uh, on the on the on the twenty ninth. So what we will do as a portfolio committee, uh, we will monitor the implementation of the strategy because we are the major beneficiary. No one else, no one else. In fact, the country is the major beneficiary um, of this um, uh, strategy. A country, because we, 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 we speak on behalf of the, we, we talk defense, um, uh, what you call so, so defense uh, capability, sovereign capability of our country. And um, <clears throat> we'll monitor it, uh, we'll monitor uh, the performance, uh, the uh, the DNL, uh, performance against the the contracts, and that they have so far uh, given us the results that I've just um, uh, highlighted. We'll also monitor the waiver of penalties and certain contractual um, uh, conditions, uh, as it were. We'll monitor the flow of funds between AMSCO, uh, uh, between AMSCO and 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 Dinel, and um, would. We'll Lead with the, the the chiefs of services who are in this meeting, chiefs of services and divisions who are in this meeting, to convey our word to to the chief that this PCB meeting, the project control board, um, uh, on one uh, on one hand, uh, and AMSCO. Oh, in other words, this tripartite meeting is the PCB, AMSCO, and DINEL must sit and thresh out some of the, uh, 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 what you call, um, perennial uh, uh, issues, um, uh, as, as it were. So, so um, those issues that uh, needed to be resolved first before you can take to the next step. We don't want to meet again and there's some months down the line and only to, uh, uh, to 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 be informed that you are still where you are, you are still where you were when you were here to come and do the presentation. You must have moved forward. I'm, I mean, I'm I don't know how I should express this uh, to the chiefs uh, that this meeting, this PCP, it's got to meet. We're not saying they must agree with everything that um, is put on the table, but at least they must express an opinion. They can't just uh, bury their hand uh, in their sand because if they do that, they the Dinel and Amsco find the reason uh, why they should remain where they are and not move forward. Indeed, because you are a client, so you've got to uh, you know comment on what they put on the table. Do you agree or you don't agree? So that if you don't agree, it's, it becomes clear that there's a dispute and uh, that uh, requires uh, a resolution. And uh, so as you see, the whole plan is predicated on uh, 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 the South African Air Force, um, you know, uh, putting in money 
and um, and and of course uh, you know some contractual uh, waiver of some penalties and contractual uh, uh, this thing uh, conditions. I don't know what those conditions are, but we we said there's a review, um, not waiver but a review. And let me just use the the review of certain contractual uh, conditions. So I'd want to leave it at that. Uh, for now, and say that the the, the chief of staff uh, ask uh, that we also hear them, and uh, we will hear them. Uh, uh, we'll arrange a meeting. Already, there is a meeting uh, we've arranged between them and ourselves to deal with their uh, uh, level uh, of satisfaction um, from. Uh, uh, the services they receive from AMSCO. They were going to present on, on to brief us on their uh, level of satisfaction because it came out in one meeting that they were not too happy with the service that they were actually receiving. And, but we're never too sure, we're not too sure as to what exactly that was actually making um, the SNTF not too happy and um, with, 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 with the, with the uh, 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 with the service uh, with respect to the projects that they have with the, with the net. So now the second point uh, with that we include on the agenda is the DNL's ability to support them. So they must come and, and talk to us uh, about that. I hope by then the minister would have been briefed so that um, uh, she to lead uh, the, the, the discussion on the day. Colleagues, I, I don't want to take it um, this issue beyond this. Uh, Mr. Mare, you wanted to say, uh, let me give one minute uh, because we are we're, yeah. we're closed basically. Listen, I, I only want to confirm, I think what you and the minister has said that the now must hear that across party lines, we are 100% on this matter. And, and that, you know, we share this interest of the South African National Defense Force and how it must be equipped and support 100%. So I just wanted to confirm that all parties support each other 100% in this. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. I think it was proper that um, I gave you the minute to put it on the record, what you've just stated. Colleagues, I... You see, it's 12 minutes past, and um, uh, this issue um, uh, occupied us uh, for, but for a good reason. Um, Sector, uh, what do you, do you think um, we should allow you, before I see if I end the meeting or not, to still make the, the presentation on the second uh, item? Uh, thank you, Chair. The other day we finished after midnight. <laughs> so it's still early yet. It's still early. Okay. No, no, it's fine. We'll take that presentation and we must not finish, at least we must aim to finish uh, around 10 o'clock. Let me thank the, 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 the DM Public Enterprises uh, and the, the board, as well as the management for the interaction. And I confirm that we'll meet on the day when, and then we'll interact further on some of the issues. We thank you for the manner in which you have um, dealt with uh, our, our concerns. And uh, we hope that as you uh, uh, move, develop your plans, we'll take uh, them uh, into account. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you are free to exit the platform. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The second item um, has been the slides have been significantly reduced because uh, the focus is on the research and development capability. Uh, um, so it, it, it fits neatly with the discussion we have just had. And um, Sekdev, uh, let me just, uh, without much ado, let me ask you to uh, launch into the presentation. The minister will then come uh, after you have made the, your team has made the presentation. 
Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and good evening. Good evening to the members of the uh, Joint Standing Committee. Good evening to the Minister and the DM. Uh, I'm not going to waste any time, except that we need to just focus on the funding requirements. What I need to say, uh, which uh, uh, UJ said at the beginning, is that the, fifth, the first 15 slides are almost setting the context and the justification why we need research and development. And uh, we all know why we do that. So what I can say, maybe two points is that one, we, we research and development is required so that we always are up to date with our technology. And that too, we are futuristic in the way that we look at technology and uh, how to help address the challenges um, that the SND have had. And uh, three is that we do have insufficient funding. Now, what that does is uh, whilst we were at the cutting edge uh, with respect to, for example, Artillery and Roy Falk uh, in other technologies, the insufficient funding is going to make us followers even in the field where we were ahead. And we cannot afford that. So Chair, um, I'm not going to waste any time except that researchers, people who are involved in research and development and looking at improvement of technologies, they need to do something. They are like pilots. If you not let them fly, they will leave. And if we do not make sure that our researchers are given an opportunity to explore and come out with new technologies, we will have a brain drain. We already have one and we don't want it to continue. So a uh, chair with those words, I just want to say, we are going to focus on funding and I've already briefed my team to just go to the crux of the matter that we have today, which is funding for research and technology. Thank you very much, chair. And Admiral Morris, Ray Admiral Morris, senior grade, is with Brigadier General Barense, who will make a presentation. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll ask Admiral Morris not to make an introduction, just allow Ad the Brigadier General to go straight into the matter. Thank you, Chair. Please go ahead. Admiral Morris, I'm still there. Uh, thank you very much, Sheikh Dev. Uh, as introduced, uh, General Barnes will continue with the presentation. Uh, um, if the chair allow, thank you. Uh, good evening, Chairperson of the uh, Joint Standing Committee on Defense, uh, good Minister evening. of Defense and Military Veterans, as well as the Deputy Minister, as well as the Acting Secretary of Defense, Chief of Staff, Chief of the Air Force. Honorable members of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, all protocol observe, as indicated by Acting Secretary, I will go directly to the of the matter, and uh, we will go to slide 16 to 27, that deals with the crux of the presentation, and then if you will allow me, uh, we will then answer, uh, go deal with questions and answering. Right. So this slide basically just tells us uh, our technology portfolios and where the dairies, uh, the Defense Evaluation Research Institute lies, as well as our test ranges. So we have a landward portfolio that deals with the South African Army requirements, uh, aerospace deals with the South African Air Force requirements and the maritime with the South African Navy requirements. And then the support operations uh, deals with uh, the South African military health services and the electronics cuts, uh, portfolio cuts across all the services and divisions in terms of optronics and electronics. This slide uh, basically uh, gives us a or provides a historical scam allocation overview of the last eight years from 2015 to 2022 and the next three years as indicated in yellow, indicate that the allocation in terms of funding exceeds the baseline, which is indicated in red. 
which has an average of 544,770,661 across. And if we go below that uh, baseline, we will see um, some capabilities that will be lost, especially in brain drain uh, areas, and we cannot afford that. Uh, luckily for us, we have been maintaining a 70 to 80% uh, average over the past couple of years in terms of our funding uh, model. So therefore you will see that above the line, the allocation as well as the planned allocation is much higher. If we look at that, we, we have not increased the baseline. In fact, the baseline should be increased annually. However, we wanted to illustrate that if we go below that line, we will do some of these capabilities, specifically looking at our skills, expertise and knowledge within the defense, science and engineering, as well as technology capabilities that lies within the theories. With regard to the uh, slide indicated here, you'll see that there is the expenditure in terms of what we've received. And you will see in this area that there has been very little uh, done. And that is most probably due because of the scamp allocations that we have been cut. And we had to then re-engage in order to get additional funding. And due to the challenges in that area, uh, we could not uh, contract due to IP issues that we have resolved with CSRR. And obviously the scam changes, uh, we had three uh, changes in the financial year and luckily we have secured the funding, but due to the fact that the, the funding became very late available, we could not place the contracts in, play, in time. Hence we are still placing some conversation with uh, OMSCO uh, yesterday on the top 40 and it seems uh, like it's gonna be promising. An average 80% of uh, funding over the eight years have been achieved, except for the financial year 21, 2022, which is here indicated, although there is a allocation, this is uh, the, the, these funds, the 472,256,823 is a rollover funding that we received from the previous year in terms of our expenditure. However, we also noted that over the next three years, uh, for the MTF23, there might be a 2% cut, uh, reducing it from 80% to 78%. The initial projection for uh, with escalation of 5% per financial year for technology development was perceived to be on a projected increase from the initial planned allocation of 713,692,262 rand in the financial year 23-24, as indicated in the allocated projected uh, total requirements running from 2015 up until 2022-23. That is the planned amount, what was allocated over the financial years, uh, looking at 20, uh, 2022 and 23, only 590 million, 110,500 has been allocated, thus giving us a, a shortfall of 89, uh, 89,596,763. Therefore, although we have indicated that uh, in our plan, it doesn't reflect a shortfall, but if you look at what was planned and what was allocated, there's definitely a shortfall. And this was also indicated and reflected in our Director Technology Development Level 3 Annual Performance Plan dated 13 January 21, thereby reflecting a shortfall in total for that financial year, 221,436,357 in total. The revised camp allocations reflected that the financial year 24-25, the allocation was reduced to 601,531,075 uh, rand, whereby the, in retrospect, the allocation shortfall of that financial year is 154,047,925 in financial year 24-25. This is quite even that we are that we need to, that research and development should continue on a positive trajectory path in order to remain on the cutting edge of technology, thereby keeping our skills, knowledge, and expertise and in support of the future technology requirements for the South African National Defense Force. The following uh, three or four slides will just be a summary of what was has been allocated um, during the uh, financial year 23, 24, 25, and then up till 25, 26 and then also giving you the total uh, uh, of those three years in terms of what will be expended. 
uh, in terms of cutting edge technology. So I'm not going to go through all the sites. You can see for yourselves in Special Forces um, uh, Project Ubuntu, um, 105,792,000 will be expended over the MTIF. And then for aerospace technology will be 272,606,000 over the MTIF. Within the maritime technology, a total of 233,467 will be spent over the MTF. And for support operations, supporting the uh, South African military health services, will be 154,425,000 grand. For electronics, that tax across all, it's the biggest pie or that will receive the biggest uh, cut of the allocation, uh, will receive 466,028,000 rand over the MTF. Uh, for the testing evaluation uh, with regard to overbook test range, which we had to um, basically secure last year, if we did not uh, use the credit efforts and financial um, authorities to do fund shuffles, we most probably would have lost some capabilities, uh, although we have lost some scientists as well as the technicians in that area, but we maintain the status uh, in terms of making sure that the capability at overbook is still alive. So the total that will be invested within the testing evaluation uh, was specifically looking at Overberg is 297,727,000. With uh, our Defense Engineering and Science University program, we, have, uh, we had to cut it in 2018 and we are now trying to secure more additional fund and you will see that on the unfunded list in order to start uh, with this uh, university programs in the new uh, MTEF. This goes same for the defense transformative, um, transformative uh, enterprise development. Uh, you can see it has also been a zero allocation and we're also seeking additional funds to continue with this uh, project and initiative. So this is a summary of basically what has been presented uh, over the past three slides. The total allocation for the financial year 23-24 for all programs is 569,951,000 and financial year 24-25, we have seen a slight increase, 601,000, oh, sorry, 601,531,000. And then for financial year 25 26, we have an allocation of 598,266,000. A slight dip in, in the allocation, uh, but it's above the uh, baseline that we have requested. There's also been a, a total that needs to be expended for that financial year, as allocated in the uh, right hand side of the slide. Is uh, the total uh, allocation of the MTF is 1,769,748,000. Just to give you a little bit of a, a snapshot in terms of the MTF allocation as what has been presented, who gets what and who's get what of the uh, size of the pie. We have Landwood um, receiving 238,704,000, uh, uh, giving us a 14% allocation. Special Forces, as indicated there in the amount, 6%, aerospace, 15%, maritime, 13%, support operations, 9%, and electronics, 26%, and testing evaluation, 17%. That just gives you a breakdown in terms of how the allocation over the next three years will look at. In terms of the financial years over the next MTF, what was planned, what was allocated, and, and what is the shortfall, as indicated in each portfolio, you, we um, have... Uh, indicated the surpluses within uh, the amount and with the shortfall within the 23-24 financial year, we're looking at 221,436,000. And then in the financial year 24-25, a, a shortfall of 154,048,000 and then for 25-26, we're looking at 192,670,000 million, uh, million, uh, rand over the MTF. This is just the unfunded costing as indicated here and uh, now uh, master plan. We have indicated that uh, we will focus on um, these type of technology pro projects that is currently unfunded should funds become available. This is not prioritized at this moment in time. Uh, until funding becomes available, we will reprioritize it in terms of what uh, the services and divisions requires. So serial number one uh, deals with the maritime airborne anti-submarine warfare system. Serial number two, multi-spectral main system. The twin and serial number three, 20 millimeter gun capability drum cannon. Serial number four, uh, special forces underwater explosive capability. 
Seal number five, joint strike myself. Seal number six, 76 millimeter Roy Clark turret, maritime re uh, requirement. We're also looking at the seven, uh, uh, serial number seven, 30 millimeter DFA and cam gun, maritime requirement to navalize these type of weapon systems that is already existing. Then obviously the uh, serial number eight, quite critical is the Royfa upgrade to Mark II. However, we need to look at futuristic uh, type of equipment as well. And serial number nine, looking at green energy, biotechnology, looking at graphite, um, uh, incinerators to create power as well as steam. We're also looking at serial number 10, looking at space command, satellite payloads for joint command and control systems, uh, and obviously for situational awareness, looking at sensors from space in order to assist uh, our, our uh, defense force with regard to decision making. Serial number 11, cybersecurity to establish a theory, arm score uh, R&D submitted to MOA. Um, there is no end user that was identified. However, arm score um, R&D division has already been in discussions with ourselves and CIMA as as well as defense intelligence. Seal number 12 uh, deals with the UAV uh, and UAS or drone uh, systems to see if we can weaponize it in terms of new technology. Seal number 13 uh, deals with information communication and secure communications. This is ongoing. Seal number 14, nanotechnology, in terms of research of new material of graphene, that is um, quite uh, a new product on, on the market and looking at the, uh, its elastic and it's um, lighter than, uh, uh, stronger than aluminum and lighter than rubber. We're also looking at the test evaluation facility required by Landwood Science at uh, AMSCO, DBEL, and then Vintin Port, which is the requirement from South African Air Force Combat. Uh, the PD has already been in process, but it's un unfunded. 17 project ledger, which is deals with the university programs, currently unfunded and looking for funding to start with this program again in the new financial year. Also with the DIF debt, we're looking at um, SMMEs, um, uh, individuals that has um, been disadvantaged. Um, we're also looking for funding for this financial year to, uh, to kickstart this program once again. A total for the financial 23-24, uh, total unfunded requirement is 1.297 billion. And in 20, uh, 24, 25, we're looking at 1.5 billion. And 20, um, 25, 26, we're looking at 1.5 to 7 uh, billion rand that is uh, in short for. Chair, that it gives us the crux of the matter. They are highlights for your own perusal. But I think uh, this ends my presentation uh, to give you just a snapshot on what we have done. Um, the breakdown in terms of the expenditure can be obtained if required. Um, but it's a high level presentation, so we did not go down into the mud in terms of the breakdown of expenditure. Um, without further ado, uh, Chair, I would like to say thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, and if you allow uh, questions and answering to take place now, sir, I submit. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, I don't know if the minister wants to come in at this stage or we would want to um, listen to the, com the, the comments uh, by the committee members first. Uh, Chair, I think we should proceed. Proceed, thanks. Uh, my, my, my only question, uh, uh, General, is, is that um, you, your expenditure is below uh, the allocated uh, amounts um, in almost ev every single year that you have actually mentioned. Um, you know, it was at 80 something percent, down to 70, down to 50. And uh, I can't remember if the, there's a year where it even went beyond 50% uh, of the allocated amount. And you even said that there was a year, you, you can go back to the slide, you even say that there was a year where, for instance, um, there was a rollover of uh, over 400 uh, million rand. It means that is money that was committed uh, in the previous financial year but could not be, 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 be spent. Uh, hence, the rollover was granted. So you can see the expenditure was 72% in 2015, 80% uh, in 2016, 2017. 75% uh, in 2017, 2019, 
and 20 and 63% and 58% um uh, down to 62 uh, percent 21 22 um i'm not going to mention 22 23 because we have we, we, this year has not been uh, still yet to be audited uh, the expenditure there um I, unless i miss something uh, is one thing to say this was your uh, your funding requirement and uh, but you got less than uh, what you requ required, but the expenditure is even less than what you were allocated. So that was my issue, uh, Mr. Copas, uh, Mare, and uh, Mr. Raider. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I actually want to start with that same page that you were finishing now, uh, Chairperson. But before, I, before that, I mean, the one thing that we know that when we look at the defense of any country, you can, you can learn from the past, but you must plan for the future. And the one thing that we know is that our adversaries are using the best technology, whether they are, are, are other adversaries in terms of military forces or, or ISIS, or, or even those who are who are uh, poaching our 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 maritime areas, they are using the best technology. They are using fifth generation digital technology, while we are in some cases still using uh, um, analog te technology. So if if you need to be up to better your uh, your adversaries, then your technology must support that. So, so I am an enormous supporter that we must invest in technology as a force multiplier, not just to have fancy things and do, do R&D and it stays at R&D. It must come into practice and it must help us as a force multiplier to, to improve um, our, our protection of our country. So my question is, um, these technologies that you are that you have shown us and the R&D that you are doing and the things that you are planning, to what extent will this give us the capabilities to have a 24 seven visual observation of our land borders plus our maritime uh, 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 service area? Because we know that we do not have the capability. You cannot do that with boots on the ground not with the new technology of, of the adversaries. So is that included? And to what extent will that uh, give us the capabilities that we require to have a 24-7 a, a observation and then use our, our hardware and our equipment, our prime mission equipment for, for rapid res response and rapid deployment of, of equipment and of soldiers? So that's my first question, and I think that links to some of these unfunded um, projects that was mentioned right at the, at the end, um, where I think we must find money. I want to ask um, whether that uh, uh, um, radars and, op and optronics that was mentioned, uh, I think, as part of, of the unfunded projects, whether some of that was was is, is, is planned for the frigate upgrades, because I've seen that many of that uh, is referred to maritime, maritime. So is the idea that that will be part of the, of the re-equipment of our frigates? Uh, and to what extent, you know, can we, can we achieve that objectives? Then my other thing, my last thing is about communication. And we have visited a uh, silver mine and we know that the, the, the capabilities and the technology currently at Silver Mine is very, very old and very close to analog, uh, which means that, that we have got a, an enormous challenge and a shortage. To what extent is what you guys are doing and all the research that you are looking and the technology that you are considering going to help us to reestablish Silver Mine? as again as the best communication center on the african continent 
Thank you very much, Chair. But I mean, I can't stress enough that we must invest in technology, satellite technology, uh, um, um, cyber technology as a force multiplier to be one up against our main adversaries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Chair. Sorry, we're load shedding, so I'm using my cell phone now. My laptop's run out of battery. Um, yeah, thanks for the presentation, General. I think you must have a fascinating job, and, and, and I guess every little boy, including me, dreams of having a tour around, uh, around your, your workshops one day. But um, I think my biggest question uh, ties in with, with something that you, you raised. You, you, you spoke about Arms Corps' R&D section. And I think R&D is an extremely expensive undertaking. Um, and, you know, I mean, scientists by their nature are expensive fellows to, to, to keep in pencils and, and, and equipment. Um, so just in terms of overlap, uh, how, mu how much work uh, is going through Armscore, how much going through Denel, various different in in entities, uh, and through the defense's, Defense Force's own uh, R&D? Uh, how much overlap is there? If you can just give me some sort of an idea about that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think Mr. Murray covered most of my other issues that I had, but just, just to cover that. Thanks, Jay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Rear Admiral. Or... Uh, point of order, Chairperson. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't Mr. know whether, I don't know whether is a phone or is what. I don't. I didn't hear anything. Can he repeat himself? No, I think the problem is on your side, Mr. Matsumai. Um, uh, they were very loud and clear. Yeah, please, also for me, for me, it was yeah, please, very loud and clear. Yeah, please attend to your gadget. All right. Okay. Sir. Thank you so much. So, uh, Admiral uh, Morris um, and uh, General um, uh, Barnes, over to you. You are muted. Um, uh, thank you, Chairperson, uh, and thank you for the questions that we've been asked. Uh, Chair, I'm going to try to uh, to answer some of the questions in terms of the uh, the the. The, the, the future technologies and then also some others and then i'm going to request that uh, general barons also augment and maybe add something uh Jay, there was a question uh, relating to to to, to where we are uh, heading and how it is going to assist the national defense force in uh, the future um Jay, if i may just allude to um although being underfunded uh, for future technologies because we are currently focusing on uh, the immediate challenges that we've got within uh, capital acquisition projects, as well as uh, plucking the gaps in terms of what is currently the, the challenges faced by the South African National Defense Force. What we are currently uh, uh, envisaging for the future is, um, uh, uh, to say the least, very much unfunded, but uh, they are also, we are also challenging, uh, we have been challenging, uh, channeling uh, funding towards the future. Hypothetically, uh, sir, we have already um, uh, um, uh, looked into space technologies, which basically speaks to the, uh, the censoring portion of the, the, the National Defense Force. If we have eyes on in terms of um, satellite technologies, um, uh, which has, uh, we have just now uh, observed the, the, the firing of uh, uh, rockets that could put um, uh, satellites in lower orbit uh, during this week. Um, and I'm referring to yesterday's test. Um, that those are the, the censoring portion, which could potentially provide us with ice. The ice portion is quite advanced, advanced in South Africa at this moment, and therefore, one would imagine that once you have eyes on in terms of uh, getting uh, our own satellites launched by our own facility, uh, um, reflecting on the abilities and capabilities that is vested within our uh, overbook test range, um, then it means um, we've got eyes on. 
that would reduce the, 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 the amount of uh, effectors, meaning um, uh, one of the honorables mentioned something about those shifts. Uh, although we might have a limited amount of effectors um, in our maritime space, um, that uh, those specific uh, sensors, meaning eyes on, could then direct the effectors. So therefore, one would imagine that once you have eyes on, you identify the target, you identify the specific area where there's a challenge that you can direct the effectors straight to that specific environment, uh, Chair. Um, we are currently in engage, uh, engaging um, science and innovation um, uh, uh, to basically uh, um, just secure an agreement so that we can also tap into their funding, which was um, alluded to during a, a, an engagement um, as part of the economic cluster, where we need to sign an agreement um, that they could put up, uh, that we could look at dual use technologies, uh, chairperson. So that those are the vehicles that we could potentially use an uh, intergovernmental uh, uh, agreement where we can, uh, we as the defense can also tap in and uh, they, we could actually join hands to basically ensure that we as the uh, National Defense Force are also capacitated. Um, the last engagement, if my memory serves me correct, was to say, what type of payload do you want to put on this specific satellite? And that's the portion that we are uh, that we were left uh, during the last uh, engagement. That, those are the issues that we are still currently resolving uh, uh, at, 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 uh, at this moment, uh, Chair. Needless to say that uh, the, the, the capabilities uh, of uh, overbook test range with a satellite launching capability is pivotal and remains pivotal for the SANDF and the country at large to basically uh, ensure that we've got that, that we've got our own ability within space at this moment. The, uh, uh, the space command uh, 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 capability is currently be, uh, being uh, 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 interrogated and there's been great strides in terms of that, uh, and that also as a result of the various uh, uh, memorandum of agreements and the, uh, uh, the discussions surrounding that uh, uh, chairperson. The second one, uh, sir, uh, Chair, is the, uh, the issue of the, uh, um, to what extent it's gonna benefit us, uh, the South African National Defense Force uh, in terms of uh, the te technology portion, I think I've partially answered um, and have responded. I think you, you, you have, you have, no, no, you generally have done, done very well in that regard. Aye, sir. Thank you very much. I'm going to request uh, General Barnes just to augment and to provide some uh, responses to the rest. Thank you very much, Chair. General Barnes. Thank you, Chair. Once again, uh, I think uh, Admiral Morris alluded to your question, and I think he answered it satisfactorily. Mm -hmm. um, however, if you have any other uh, particular issue with regard to that, all that I want to say with regard to looking into the future and will it come into practice, um, say so yes, it does. However, development, research and development does not normally go in. You can have various um, technology readiness levels. We normally focus on one to five, which means it's this concept. And um, if you want to demonstrate it, you go to uh, tier level six and seven. Um, however, it depends on um, what you really require. And uh, do you just want a feasibility study to see whether it works or not? Yes, it does come into practice, but only as a demonstrator. Only once a demonstrator has been um, gone through a DT&E, which is development test and evaluation, uh, the services will decide, or the services and divisions will decide whether they want the product to then be further developed in the pre-production model or a, into a, 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 a manufacturing capability in order to buy off the shelf or have it uh, for their services to be utilized in operations. So basically we go through a lengthy process and it goes up to three to five to even seven years that you can get to a demonstrator because it's all about development. But if the requirement comes from the services, it could be made available in order then to go into manufacturing. With regard to uh, Honorable um, uh, Marie's uh, questions with regard to technology, and I thank him for supporting R&D and looking for additional funds. 
Um, that is good news to me as well. Um, but to what extent the capability to have 24 uh, seven uh, availability in order to um, support the maritime environment uh, as well as other services. And I think Admiral Morris alluded to as well, but if we have a space payload as the chief of the air force has um, alluded to in terms of space command, that will give us a broader spectrum in terms of what our capability, it will give us reach, it will give us the agility in order to move and rapidly move into areas that we currently have no eyes on currently in terms of our um, uh, previous borders. Um, so yes, it can be made available. Um, there's been good strides made with the multi-role surveillance radar. Wait, one minute, um, uh, you're becoming too technical. Okay, so, so basically what I'm saying is that, um, yes, it can be made available and it can assist us. However, like I've indicated, we only go to a demonstrator level and once the, the services are ready for it, we can then uh, move it over into acquisition for further processing for uh, acquisition. Uh, with regard to the deployments, it will have a rapid response depending on our doctrine. And then the radars with regard to the maritime environment, uh, the multi-role um, surveillance radar is both for air, land, and uh, maritime. And we have made good strands. We are going over to phase two, uh, and funds has been made available. However, due to the uh, late contracting, it might have a challenge in the, uh, requiring additional funding, uh, as we are planning to have the demonstrator available um, early, sorry, late in 2024. It was planned for, uh, for December 23. Um, okay. With regard to the question with regard to Mr. Rader, um, with regard to arms core R and D, um, there has been overlaps um, with our technology. It does uh, play a huge role in terms of our various portfolios. We have steering committees and DRDBs where we share the information and where we can use the uh, the building blocks from certain um, technologies to be utilized within the various other fields. Um, we have uh, various uh, com committees that deal deals with it as share information as well, specifically looking at the Institute for Maritime Technology and CSR. We, I, we think you've, you've, you, you, I think you you've answered, yeah, I think you've answered that question very well. Um, in case uh, the minister will be facing, uh, uh, I mean, her system will be kicking her out uh, in the next uh, two minutes. Uh, I wanted to give us a concluding uh, remark uh, before uh, that happens. Thank you, Chair. I submit. Thank you so much, Chair, uh, Admiral and, uh, and, and General. Um, Minister, we, we are concluding now. Uh, just your final remark. And after yourself, there'll be no one uh, uh, commenting. I think the system is... Okay. Oh, yeah. Sure, thank you. I'm not sure how long the system is going to give me. <laughs> but I think that um, um, it's a good thing that um, we we today are beginning to look at all those things that uh, worry us. Um, I would say that uh, we perhaps we perhaps must uh, get um, another chance um, after some of us have gone through, considered, simplified things. But I definitely think that we must start really looking at technology around the borders. I think it is the solution. I, I also think that um, today's uh, input also helps us because it begins to push us to a discussion which I think is crucial, um, just the, the cyber security issues and so on and so forth. And, and we can only start off by looking at um, technology in the borders, um, um, we would be far ahead of time, I think Mr. Mare would agree, if we even had technology when we went into Mozambique. I think our boys would have been home by now. But thank you very much for this. It, um, it at least tells us where the challenges are and what we can do. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you very much. I think the, the ex executive summarized it very well that to are uh, starting to be falling behind, even in areas where we were leading uh, as a country. And um, I think you are right, Minister, to say, I think it's one area that we need to give a close a closer look uh, at. Colleagues, thank you very much. The, um, everybody on the platform, uh, all the uh, 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 
uh, you know, uh, everyone, including the chiefs and, uh, and the chief of staff, uh, we appreciate that you were, you, you, you persisted, you were patient until this time. You've gone beyond uh, by an hour. Thank you, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much, Minister. Hi, what's study, Sabu? Yo. Thank you very much, Chair. It's a, it's, it's a <laughs> difficult... <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Hey, this was a difficult Thank you, uh, Chair. But a very, Thank you, very Chair. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.